Okay, let's do a quick mic check, see how this sounds. Hi, Luis. You can hear me. Hola. Hey, welcome. Yeah, I uh, just, I like to double check. Uh, also helps me figure out my levels. Like, I feel like my levels are a little low at the moment, if I'm being honest. Let me pump that up just a bit. Okay, now uh, that's better. That's better. Sabra, hi, welcome. Sounds great. Good. Yeah, I just I pumped up the volume just a smidge. Um, it's such a hard, it's such a hard thing to figure out the balance of everything. But I think hopefully it's good now. All right, I will be on camera in just a minute. I actually forgot to put uh, the links in the description on YouTube, so I'm just gonna do that really quick. Um, let me just... Edit title and description. Okay, here we go. Um, just want to make sure everyone, because not everyone's on Discord, so they might not see all the information. Um, but I will share the episode. here and um, my chosen reference. I, I grabbed a bunch of screenshots, so if people want to use those screenshots, they're welcome to it. Um, it should be in the description now. You might have to refresh because of that. Um, but yeah should be there. Alrighty. Sorry. Now let me get back to chat. Oh, hey. How are you both doing today? And, oh, uh, let me also, let me invite people to this too. Copy. All right. Um, okay, there we go. And here I thought I had everything all set up prior to starting. <laughs> this goes to show. You have painting supplies out and a pigeon on your head. Does the pigeon help with painting? I'm not familiar with that um, painting technique, I'll be honest. I don't have my paints out today be uh, yet, or my painting supplies out yet, because I figured I was going to take a few minutes to say hi to everybody and get everything situated anyways. Um, so yeah. Um, hey, 
Hey, Meredith. It's 5 a.m. in Sydney. Jeez, that's commitment right there. Thank you. That's um, more than I deserve, that's for sure. Um, you got out your paints uh, for the first time in a while. So good. Thanks, Louise. Uh, I love your pigeon where you, uh, you and the sketching zoom. Oh, there's so much going on that I'm not even aware of. Awesome. This is great. Hey, everyone. The pigeon is more helpful on your head than jumping on your desk. I can see that being a problem. I feel like having a pigeon jumping on your on your desk might might be a problem for painting. What what um what sketching thing are you talking about? Is this uh, Dylan Sarah's uh, Zoom sketch uh, thingy? If you don't mind me asking, and if you can't share, don't worry about it. My uncle has uh, some birds, and uh, before he had birds, before I, actually before I met them, I didn't realize birds could be so, like, sweet and cuddly. It's really funny. Um, they have a... Uh, what is it? Uh, cockatiel or cockatoo? I can't remember. It's the big white one. Um, and it's so friendly and like so cuddly. All it wants to do is get pet all the time. I never thought a bird would be like that. All right. Let's get the paints out. All right, actually, before I do that, I need to scrape my paint. Like I said, I figured it would take a minute for some people to, to come in, and I'd have to, like, kind of do some hosting and explanation because I don't know that everyone knows what's going on. In case there's anybody new here, let me explain what's happening. Uh... Portrait Artist of the Year is a fun uh, program that I cannot uh, participate in, unfortunately, uh, being in Austin, Texas. So I thought it'd be fun for us to do a uh, paint along with Portrait Artist of the Year. I picked an old episode because I like uh, David Tennant. Also, um, it had a good quality on YouTube. I could get some good screen grabs. Uh, you're welcome to paint anybody from that episode, um, any of the any of the models. I just chose David Tennant. I shared some screenshots that I grabbed, so uh, there's a link to a Google Drive. Um, if you want to use that, you're welcome to it. Um, you know, just to make life easier. Um, and there is a Discord channel. There's a link in YouTube to my Discord and to my Discord channel. And I will periodically be showing uh, people's progress if people want to share their progress. But I finally set it up so I can actually show... I can actually show uh, images from that Discord channel on my stream. So I can show and share everyone's progress. And, uh, you know, if they want. Um, yeah. Let's see. Okay, I missed a ton. Um, uh, uh, oh, um, Sabro says that uh, Dylan Sarah did a, uh, let's face it, students yesterday. Okay, so it was, it was for his class thing. That's cool. And, um... That's awesome. He's great. I really enjoy. I really, I'm really glad uh, I discovered him. Uh, his channel's great. 
Alrighty. And uh, Des is here. She's getting set up. Welcome, Des. I hope you're feeling better. All right. Actually, you know what? I am going to take. I am going to take a photo and share with you all the 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 reference that I'm doing, so everyone can see what it is I'll be working on. Um, let's see. Hold on a second. Okay. Um, every time I think I have everything all set up, I realize there's all these little things that I didn't think about. All right, let's go to Discord. Paste here. All right. So, um, Okay, that didn't work. Hold on a second. Um, sorry, I thought that worked. I, I set up the Discord thing earlier today and now it's not working? What is going on? Uh, is it... This is so disappointing. I literally had it set up earlier today. Okay. All right. There we go. This is um, this is what I'm working on. Um, hey, Carla, welcome. Hi, Leah. It's such a clever idea for today. Oh, thank you. If it's popular, I might do it a few more times. Uh, you know, periodically. I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be fun to have people actually like live doing it with me, like on camera type of thing, if possible. But you know, that's down the line kind of thing. Hey, Zan, welcome. You got your timing backwards and almost missed it. You think you're going to paint uh, Michael Cole uh, from the same episode? Nice. Yeah, Laura uh, wants to do Michael as well, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, so this is the reference I'm going to be using. In case anyone's curious, this is... Uh, I'm getting a warning on about my stream. Is everything okay? Let's see. What is uh Oh shut up. Stupid uh hold on a second. Let me OBS is giving me some weird warnings. Okay. Um Sorry, I had to check this. It's fine. Um, okay, sorry about that. Just making sure. Is uh, is the stream stuttering or having any issues? Anybody? Um, please let me know. Um, I don't think it should, but yeah. Anyways, all right, that's what I'm working with. Um, yes. Hopefully the stream isn't having any issues. Uh, but let me know if, if it is. Um, yeah. Stream is smooth. That's... Uh, I thought it would be. I um I did uh what's it called? Um I didn't change any of these settings, so everything should be good. I don't know what they're talking about, but whatever. Or it says I always assume it's my laptop and internet when it said it stutters. I, it could be, but please do let me know if it's like consistent, um, because I I'd like to know. Uh, I think what's happening, not to give too much inside baseball stuff, but I think what's happening is my bit rate's lower than they recommend for 4K. But that's because I am using uh, AV1 encoding, which requires less uh, bit rate. So, you know, whatever. 
All right. I am going to start the clock for me, at least. I don't have a timer. Let's be honest, it's fine. Uh, um, so it's 1.20 right now. So it took 20 minutes to get set up. Cool. Uh, so it'll go, I'm gonna try and finish my painting at um, uh, 5.20, roughly. You know, I'm also handling other stuff, so. We'll see, but you know, roughly. And I'm really looking forward to every to seeing everyone else's uh, stuff uh, paintings as as we go through it. And I'm sorry I don't have good uh, reference for uh, for Michelle or Mike. Is it Michelle or Michael? Michael, Michael. Uh, but yeah. All right. This is fun. I actually grabbed a, this is one of the largest panels I've painted on since, uh, streaming, uh, largest on stream, I should say. It's a, uh, 16 by 16. So I went large with it. All right. I'm glad so many of you showed up for this. This is going to be fun. Um, yeah, let's see how, how we can get this going. I do have a sh small surprise for what I'm planning on this painting. It's not a huge surprise, so like, don't, you know, uh, but you'll see it as, as it goes on. I think you'll, you'll figure it out as it goes on. Some of you will probably be able to guess it, so no guessing. Okay. Alrighty, I'm just going to use a bit of linseed oil today. No uh, mineral spirits, just a little bit of linseed oil. So I have a smooth um, uh, paint. You can't, Des says I can't find my new 9x12 uh, canvas panels. You're a mess today, got to go a little bigger. I just... Uh... Hey, don't... Don't worry about it, Laura. It's not a big deal. And if you need to take a few extra minutes to find whatever it is, go for it. This is not, you know, this is for the fun of it. This isn't a, you know, this isn't a real competition. Uh, although, um, Sky, uh, whatever you're called, Sky, not new, is it, is it news? Sky, TV channel Sky, whatever they are. Um, do an American version of this, please, and call me. I totally want to be on this. Also, don't turn it into like a horrible American competition. Just keep, just make it with Amer the same way with Americans. <laughs> Luis. Uh, Louis says, uh, Liad moves the canvas, uh, aside to reveal David Tennant sitting in his studios. I wish that would be huge. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, uh, I wouldn't even keep that a secret. I'd be like blasting it that he's going to be here. <laughs> I'd want everybody to know. Are you kidding? Nah, I wish. You'll see. It's it's not a it's not going to be a big a big uh, a big surprise. Meredith says they do a Canadian version for real. Is it called the same thing? I never even heard of this. They once did an American art like artist um, uh, competition, but it was kind of bullshit. It was a long time ago. It's like, I don't even remember how many years ago, long time ago. And it was kind of crap if I'm being honest. They do the landscape ones in Canada. That's so interesting. Shit. Maybe I need to start painting landscapes. I am not a landscape painter, but, um, I heard something really interesting. This is kind of like a side note, but 
I heard that um, landscapes are actually easier to uh, to sell in general than uh, than portrait art, uh, with the exception of like maybe commissions of actual portraits. But like figurative and portraiture art is actually harder to sell than uh, landscapes, which I thought was really interesting. Meredith says, yes, I saw it, but they may have not continued it after the pandemic. Interesting. Louis says, I feel like the U.S. version would be portrait artist, uh, Thunder Dome survivor. Yeah, pretty much. There was, they did a, um, I think they called it like America's next great artist or some BS like that. Uh, and it was, it was all, um, younger people. Most of them were conventionally TV attractive, most. Um, and each, each week they had a new competition. So they all, were in a big group and they all like did it at, together. And, and like each week they had a uh, competition and one person would leave that type of thing. So Thunderdome style where like one gets eliminated. And then um, it was like... Regardless of what type of art you did, each week it was something else. So it's like, okay, this week we're doing found uh, found sculptures. And even if you're a painter, you're doing sculptures, you know, like found material sculptures. And they would they would give them time limits on like and uh, and supply limits and all kinds of stuff like that, you know, and it's like, okay, this is maybe funny, but like it's not r serious. Yeah. Uh, Meredith says, yes, landscapes and flower gardens. You sell more landscapes. Interesting. Des says, the, sit the sitter is turned or it's abstract. Huh? I don't understand. Wait, 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 uh, uh, yeah, landscapes sell better. Okay, Laura says, landscapes sell better or portraits that don't have faces. Oh, I, I get it. I get it. Sorry, I it took a second. I will say this, it's it's um it, it's surprisingly easier to paint portraits without faces and with faces. So maybe I'm doing it all wrong. Uh there it says I will Australia would do one as Wait, I will Australia would do one as well cuz there's no reason except sponsors, I guess. Um, I think you mean like to do the TV show? Yeah. I mean, it's all about the sponsors, right? The thing is that in, in the UK, I guess the one thing that's like really working in their favor is they have, they have like the National Portrait Gallery there. So they're really big into portraits. Like, so I think that's why, um, like they have Portrait Artist of the Year there. America does have a portrait society. I'm sure every country probably does, but just because you have one doesn't mean it's regarded. At least, you know, in theory. Oh, you wish you mean. Okay, Meredith says I wish. Yeah. yeah. I get that. I feel that. You know, the thing is, like, I would, I would actually, to be on the show, I would totally move to the UK temporarily, um, to be on the show. I would do that. I don't care. I'll move. Meredith says, in Australia, they would only get interest if football was showing on it in the background. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Like I said, the UK, I think they have, they have the portrait, the portrait gallery. So the, the, um, national portrait gallery, even if it's not like super popular, um, it's very regarded, I think is the thing. And so like a lot of people with a lot of money regard it. And so I think that really helps them a lot, um, in this instance for the show.
I mean, look, if we're being honest, they're not going to get a huge amount of viewers in America either. Like, right, you know, let's be clear. It's not exactly going to be like the big, a big draw. Uh, but, you know, it, it'll get enough, I, I assume. Do you all, um, do you all watch Twitch at all? I know some people here, uh, have come here, uh, to my YouTube channel from my Twitch channel. So I know some of you watch Twitch, but, um, uh, I don't know how many people watch Twitch. Um, the reason I'm bringing it up is there's recently have been a thing on Twitch where, um, Twitch has an issue with, um, uh, OnlyFan models who are trying who use Twitch as a way of getting people like becoming influencers and then getting people to, uh, you know, follow them on OnlyFans and so on. And that is not the subject I'm really getting into right now. Um, Des says I have Twitch up all the time <laughs> there. Um, but the reason I'm mentioning it is because, uh, one of the things they've been doing is they, some of these models have been playing video games, uh, while wearing like, um, green, they'll, they'll wear clothing that's green. So their clothing becomes green screened and then they can play the game on that. And it's projected basically on their clothing. This is all a very roundabout way of saying they'd get a lot of viewers in America if they did that with painting artists of the portrait artists of the year though. <laughs> Uh, Meredith says painting of interiors sell well as well. Never heard of Twitch. Okay. Twitch is a gaming plat. It originally was a game streaming platform. So people stream games and you watch them live. Now it's just become a live content, uh, streaming website. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was all a roundabout way of getting it to that joke. That basically was all I was getting at. Sorry, very long, very long way to get to a joke. I know. All right, this, there's definitely some things that are off here, but I'll get to that in a minute. He has such a unique, uh, unique features, like very pronounced. So it says wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Yes. Um, that says, uh, artists stream there, people doing all sorts of things. Yes, they do gaming. They do IRL stream. There are people who just like, go around other countries and stream their travels and stuff. It's a, there's a lot of good things there. Um, I, there's a lot of about Twitch I like. I just, um, for art, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of reasons I'm not, well, I'm streaming on both, so I'm streaming simultaneously. Sabra says, how's the U.S. with nudity these days? Um, very uptight. Here in Holland, we have a painting competition also with nude models on TV. I'm guessing that would be an issue. Uh, no, that wouldn't be an issue at all. It just would never air. <laughs> now, they, they, they could censor it. They'd be okay censoring it. But yeah, they're real uptight here. It's unfortunate. Yeah. All right.
All right, I think uh, the the uh, what's it called? The astute of you will figure out that one of the changes I'm doing very soon, but we'll see. My big surprise, big surprise. It's not a big surprise and yeah, but you'll see just a minute. Um, let's see. Sabra says, uh, Luis at last year, a uh, last year of my son's teachers was a nude model. That was mildly traumatic for him. Uh, oh, she was a nude model on the show. That that could be. Um, yeah, that that would be. Uh, that'd be weird. Uh, as a as a kid, I could see that being a little weird. I remember the first time I painted from or did drawing from a live nude model. Um, I was around 15. Uh, I don't remember exactly how old I was, but it was around that age. And in the first like, I'd say like 20 minutes, I was very awkward because she was standing there getting ready and she had a robe on, but I was so uncomfortable and awkward as like a 15 year old because I don't want to stare. I don't want to make her uncomfortable. You know, I don't want to like, I, I don't know what to do with myself type of thing. And then she, you know, gets on st on stage and everyone's drawing from her and I start drawing from her and um, real fast, all the awkwardness just kind of vanished because I was just focused on like, all right, let's just, I'm focusing on drawing. So, you know, just kind of, all of that just kind of went away real fast. Yeah, I, it would be, it, I can see it being very uncomfortable to watch TV and see one of my teachers as a teenager, you know, one of my teachers in the nude. Although, um, you know, I don't think it's that big of an issue, especially if the culturally it's not that big of an issue. I think that's a big part of it. Although now in America, it's becoming kind of uh, common, not well, maybe common might be the wrong word, but more common because there's a, there's a number of teachers who are only fans models. Um, you know, that happens. It was five and five minutes later. It's not a big deal in this country, honestly. You know, I think that's such a healthy attitude to, to have on it, honestly, as like a society, you know. I feel like America is so much, um, what's it called? Their priorities are a little backwards. It's like, oh, blood, gore, and violence? Cool. Nudity? The thing we all possess? No! Think of the children.
I don't know. That's just my opinion. But then, you know, my opinion probably isn't like the best opinion to listen to because I also have talked about like, you know, if kids are bu are bugging you, you can always just like duct tape them to the wall. And I was, you know, mostly joking. But, you know, it's the reason I don't have kids. I'm, I am totally joking. Although, I, at one of my jobs, um, there was a job I used to, uh, I worked at, and all the people there were really cool, and they would talk about all kinds of things that they were dealing with the, their lives, whatever it is. And I, and they're all a little older than me. Everyone had kids and owned a home and all this stuff. And so it became one of my favorite pastimes to just put out like the worst opinion on how to deal with children or uh, uh, housework or anything like that. <laughs> so it became like a joke that I constantly go back to. Sabra says that it's the reason I have a lot of duct tape. See, I knew I wasn't the only one who thought that was going to be a good idea. All right. But one thing I noticed uh, that you guys uh, queue up readily while Australians are dead set hopeless of being in a queue everywhere. Oh, well, hold on. Hold on. Right, this is. But one thing I noticed is that you guys queue up really well. Oh, Americans. Yeah, Australians are dead set hopeless of being in a queue every, anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, Americans are pretty good about that, uh, you know, and it, I feel like it has its positives and its negatives, you know, I, I, I feel like, I don't know, I'm, America is such a broad country, it's, um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of people here, it's really hard to, like, generalize, um, but yeah, I don't know, um, You know, yeah, I, I, there's a there's a lot of weird things that go into it all. That says, oh, we queue up real uh, well here in Canada and we take great offense at anyone jumping the line. I mean, I, I suppose that's a good thing, technically speaking. It, it's definitely more organized and orderly makes for a more organized society, I guess. I don't know. I feel like I do feel like Americans can be a little too um, like button up and like rule followers a little bit sometimes. Um, it's like, oh, well, that's improper. It's like, I don't care if it's improper. Uh, but, you know, whatever. I don't know. I, I, I feel like my I feel like I feel like America is so, how can I describe it? Like, wh however you want to be, you can find areas in the country that are like that. So it's very much a, um, until you can't and you have to go outside of those communities. But yeah, there's all kinds of, there's such a wide variety of people here, I guess. Meredith says, oh, well, Australians are hopeless rowdy if, uh, if they have to queue. That's funny. I, I guess it's just kind of, I don't know. I, you know what it is? It's that I don't get out of my house a lot and I don't interact with a lot of people all the time. And so I don't really know. Cause like, 
you know, I'll watch things on TV and people are aghast at certain things. And I'm just like, that doesn't seem like a big deal to me. Or, you know, that's not a, and I don't know, especially when it comes to like nudity and stuff, you know, so I don't know. That says I have six references and now I can't decide. Uh, I recommend three quarters view. Generally, three quarters is the way to go. So in case anyone isn't familiar with everything that David Tennant's done, uh, the thing that I'm doing a little different is uh, the purple background. I changed the background from uh, red to purple. Uh, and that's like the big, like I said, it wasn't big, it's a small thing. Um, because he was um, Purple Man, or the is it the Purple Man? Yeah, Purple Man in uh, Jessica Jones. And I thought he did such a good job in that show. Um, so, yeah, I thought this would be a fun little change to do. Changing background color is uh, surprisingly difficult, though. It's not just the background that you have to change. You have to account for all the, um, uh, all the, what's it called? Um, all the bounced light and everything. So changing, changing, uh, a background color or something like that in general, just so everyone who's watching, if they, if you ever want to do your own change or even today, um, just be aware that you have to compensate for a ton of factors. Um, you know, I'm not saying that it's like the hardest thing in the world, but sometimes it's almost impossible. This one is not, but sometimes it is. Sorry that the dogs are driving you bonkers, Des. I have to remember that I have to go fast. I, I get talking about things and don't apologize. I'm here to talk about stuff, but I forget and I have to like keep in mind that I have to go fast. Just like Sonic. Gotta go fast. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what I were talking about before this, but yes, David Tennant, uh, like I said, he did a great job on, um, Jessica Jones and anyone who hasn't seen that, I highly recommend, recommend it. Uh, I feel like the first season was good, uh, for sure. Plenty of violence and nudity in that show, though. Just be aware. Since we brought it up. I have this little squeegee thing that, you know, uh, not squeegee thing, the paint roller thing. Paint, that's not the right word either. Um, yeah, the tube squeezer, that's I guess what it's called. Yeah. It, um, 
that's how I got these, uh, you know, these marks, but I cannot find mine anymore. I don't know what happened to it. Frustrating that I can't find my stuff half the time. You know, uh, I like David Tennant a lot. I never got into um, Doctor Who, though. <laughs> I have to admit, I've never been the biggest Doctor Who fan. I don't know what it is about Doctor Who, but I never, never got into it. Shame. I know. Shame on me. I don't know what it is. It, it never, it never appealed to me for some reason. The, the funny thing is that on paper, it appeals to me a lot. Like I like a lot of the, I like a lot of the opinions of the show. I like a lot of the like attitude and stuff in the show. But for whatever reason, it just never, whenever I watch it, it never catches me. Renda says, I live in a studio apartment with an alcove as my painting zone, and I can still lose things in one room, lol. Yeah, I know, I, it's the same way, like, my, my studio is in, in a single, in a bedroom in, in our house, and I lose everything in this, like, little four by four, no, the room's bigger than that, but, like, my painting area is, like, let's say four by four, or whatever, five by five, you know, whatever it is, I still lose everything in it, I don't understand how I do that. It's crazy. In case anyone is ever looking to buy one of those uh, paint uh, roll squeezer, tube squeezers, um, I highly recommend getting the one with the like big handle one. It's um, so much more comfortable than the ones that are just like a, a square around. But if you do go with the other ones, get the ones that have like a flat area to hold on to because the other ones that are just like a rectangle around the whole edge uh i have one of those it hurts my hand to use it like because because you have to like grip it tight and it just digs into your hand it's very uncomfortable I would show the one that I have, but I don't uh, have, I can't find it. Uh, Meredith says, me too, I'm hopeless about losing stuff. That's funny. Uh, are you using medium uh, linseed oil? That's all I'm using right now. Which is technically, I guess, technically a medium. Yeah, that's all I'm using is some linseed oil just to get the paint to be a little more loose um, when I need it. 
sometimes it definitely doesn't need it. Uh, in the beginning, it needed it a lot more because my white paint was a little set from earlier because it had been out longer than I had intended. Um, so it started to set a little. So I needed the I needed the the oil to help everything move. But now that I put out some fresh paint, I need it a lot less. Although I think this is still old paint. No, no, it's not. I guess everything's fresh paint now. So yeah, I need it a lot less now. But not all paint is the same. Some paint out of the tube is very firm. So like, you know, you, you might need it as well anyways. So I'm going to do my normal uh, kind of routine uh, painting wise in the sense of like, I'm laying in all the like general colors and stuff right now, uh, clearly. And I, you know, I sketched in everything. Um, and then I'm going to grab my brayer. I'm going to mess it all up. And then I'm going to take a photo of this, drop it into Photoshop real quick. Um, overlay the two and then, uh, go back to painting everything. Um, that's the, because of my technique, because I do that, I can be a lot quicker and looser with my, um, initial, uh, painting stage because I know it's all going to get messed up anyways. So it's not a, like, it's not a huge issue for me if, um, you know, some things are slightly off or slightly in a different spot. It just, you know, it's not a big deal. Let's see. Carla asks, is Leo, do you, use, do you usually use the same colors for your portraits? Yes. I basically use the, with the, I did take a class recently with Nicholas Aribe. So I did all kinds of stuff, for, uh, all kinds of colors there. But uh, for my own portrait, but when I'm using my own, like my preferred palette, I use this palette for everything. I do, uh, I basically paint everything with this exact palette unless, um, unless I have a particular reason not to, like, you know, oh, I'm trying to use this color this time, you know, like that type of thing. But basically with that exception, I, I paint everything with this one palette. The only time I will not, I guess, is maybe for convenience or if I'm trying to get a particular look. Uh, I will add colors to it if I need to, like spot colors. Um, but if I do that, you'll know you'll know it because the color that I paint will be very, very obvious because it would have to be extremely um it'd have to be an extremely chromatic color uh yeah because i if it's not an extremely chromatic color i can mix it it would have to be something like straight out of the tube basically that i need and cannot mix because there's almost no color i can't um, mix uh, with the exception of like some very, very extreme bright, bright colors. Uh, yeah, that's why I like this palette. It has its disadvantages. It's not perfect, by the way. Um, it has a lot of good aspects to it. Uh, one of the main disadvantages of this palette is there's no convenience colors, you know, and I spend a ton of time mixing. So it has its, its advantages and disadvantages. But, um, to give an idea, like I can mix nearly, nearly CAD red, uh, light, uh, I can, um, uh, 
uh, what's it called? Uh, teal, um, what, um, like a, like a teal color, like, or cyan color. I can mix that, uh, oh, cobalt teal. That's what I was thinking of. Uh, nearly, nearly matching cobalt teal. Um, maybe there's a purple that I can't match. I, I, I haven't ever tried, uh, what is it? Dioxazine purple. I want to, but I've never had a, never had the opportunity of using that. Um, but yeah, I, there's literally almost, I'm sure there are some colors. Like maybe if I was, you know, if I was painting someone wearing one of those like orange reflective, uh, thingies or something like that, if I had to have it like super bright, maybe I'd need an orange in particular for that. I don't know. It's hard to think of something that I, you know, in particular where I'd need it. But yeah, the, the reason I initially uh, I used to have a much more like traditional palette and I used to have uh, I'm trying to think it was it burnt umber it wasn't raw umber. I think burnt umber I used to have on my palette. Um, but I got so frustrated with how fast it dried that I took it off my palette. Uh, yeah. yeah. For anyone who doesn't know raw umber, burnt umber, all those, uh, they tend to dry very fast. Which is really good if you want your paints to dry faster. <laughs> you know, I don't uh, generally. So it was more of a disadvantage than anything for me. All right. Time for the brayer. Let's see, how do I want to handle this? So the thing with the brayer is it transfers color from one area to another. So I, I try and think like generally where I want to push color, you know, because uh, a little bit, I like to have that, you know, idea roughly. Oh yeah, Carla, does that, uh, does that answer your question or do you, is there more that you wanted, uh, clarification on a, around that? I don't mind talking about palettes. I can talk about palettes all day. <laughs> I spent a long time building my palette. My palette before this was very different. Originally I had a much more traditional, quote unquote, traditional palette. And then I slowly started adding more and more, uh, like, I guess, modern or different colors. And this is a pretty, in some ways, traditional um, palette now in the sense of like it's, it would be considered a CMYK uh, primary palette at this point, because that's really what it is. Um, yeah, it's basically, like I said, a CMYK primary palette. But the thing about it is it, something worth mentioning is that um, our paints don't follow uh, purely. So uh, CMYK is considered primaries for subtractive uh, color and light colors, colors made of light, which are considered additive. Um, subtractive means when you mix them all together, they go to black and an additive when you mix them all together, they go to white. So like the way our screens go to white, uh, when all the colors are active. Um, but, um, paints are both paints aren't one or the other. They're actually both. They're more subtractive than additive, but there's an element of additive to it, uh, because you have light that goes, that's projecting onto the paint and it mixes optically. So it's not, it's not as simple as like, oh, CMYK. Technically this is rose, not cyan. I mean, not magenta, sorry. Um, and the other thing too is that um, 
my blue is not a cyan. It's a much darker uh, blue. When you mix it with white, it goes to cyan. But um, cobalt teal is more of a cyan color. But cobalt teal is not as good for a primary palette because when you go to darken it, so let's say you have you have a cobalt teal on your um, on your palette. If you if you want to mix a dark blue, you can't. Oh, sorry, a saturated dark blue, you can't, because as soon as you sat as soon as you go darker, it loses saturation. Um, this one doesn't. It's saturated at a dark color. When you go lighter, it does start to lose saturation, but uh, much slower than uh, than cyan than uh, cobalt teal does when going darker. So it's not you know it's not perfectly like a you know, what's it called primary CMYK palette, but. Um, yeah, my, my goal wasn't to make a CMYK palette necessarily. It was to make a, um, a prime, it was a limited, my goal was to make a limited palette with the widest, uh, widest gamma range or chromatic range that I could. So I wanted as few colors as I could to make the largest, uh, color space that I could. That was my goal. All right, um, I am going to take a photo of this right now. Oh, I'll be able to show you guys. I just realized I'll be able to show you all what I do with my uh, reference so you can see how I work. I usually can't do that, but now because of the Discord thing, I can. So I can't show it to you live as I do it, but I'll take a minute and then I'll show you all uh, the results so you can see how I work, what my process is. All right. I'm going to still be here, but um, I'm just going to step off camera for a second. Because I have to do this over over here. There's no getting around that part. But yeah, if I, um, I originally had magenta on my palette, um, but with quinacridone rose versus quinacridone magenta, I can actually mix um, I can actually mix, uh, quinacridone, uh, magenta, like I can mix an equivalent of magenta to magenta with my, with rose and other colors. Uh, so it, it seemed kind of pointless. I also used to have phthalo green on my palette, uh, because I wanted to be able to do, I wanted to use it with my quinacridone rose to mix a black, but I ended up just uh, using it only for that, and it seemed kind of pointless to use quinacridone rose and quina and uh, thalo thalo green or thalo emerald to mix black when I could just buy black and use that. So, just seemed kind of pointless. That's the thing. I also used to have. Um, what was it? Um, uh, what's the red? Um, uh, cad red light. I used to have on my palette, but I ended up just not using it, and it would. And after a while, I just stopped putting it on my palette because what's the point of putting it on my palette if I never use it? <laughs> All right. So here is what I do. You'll see this in a minute. Um, I will show you all. Okay, here we go. 
Hold on. Um, it freaks me out every time I go to show my uh, screen. Uh, it freaks me out so bad. All right. Um, here we go. All right. So this is what I'm going to be looking at when I draw, when I go in now and draw things in. This is the white lines are are uh, the reference photo, the reference photo uh, processed with a filter so that I can see the lot like where all the edges are. And so you can see how close or how far I was in certain areas. Certain things are like spot on. Certain things are a little off. You know, certain things are very off. Um, and so on. This is how I work uh, usually. I can't paint from this. I can only draw my, um, you know, my lines from it. And I've, I posted that in the Discord, so if anyone wants to co download it and look at it, open it up larger or whatever, let me, you know, you're welcome to. Camera. There we go. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, sometimes it's not easy to see what I'm looking at and to like differentiate between what is happening on in the photo and in real life. But yeah, this is how I work. Camera is having a hard time today. Keeps trying to find my face somewhere else. Oh, wow. Very helpful. Yeah. So in, in case anyone's curious how I get that filter, um, in Photoshop, it's called glowing edges. And so you just, uh, you know, you fiddle with the little dials and get it to the way you want. And then I set it to screen the layer. You put it to screen. So only the color comes through the white color comes through, not the white color, the bright colors. However, if you happen to have a very, very light um, image, you might have to uh, invert it and multiply or something, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. Let's see. All right, we're almost an hour into it. How's everyone doing? Everyone who's participating, how are you all doing? How's it going? Louise says it's a mess. I know, but I'll pull it together. Don't worry. I, I know you were talking about yours. I'm sure you'll pull it together too. Carlos says mine too. Yeah. Um, well, it is worth remembering for anyone who's like, you know, uh, thinks that there's is a mess and everything. It's worth remembering that the people who work, who do this show, they get a bit of time prior to, um, to being on the show. They know they're going to be on the show and they get time to practice, you know, theoretically, uh, to, to get there, uh, you know, to kind of get used to the time limit thing. Louis says, I'm less certain of pulling it together. I have faith in you. Des says, I have a background, LOL. That's great. That's a good start. I mostly just have a background, so. Yeah.
So what I'm doing, I'm using all the marks that my paint uh, has left. You know, all the paint brush marks and the the brayer marks and everything. And I use I use those as um, uh, you know landmarks for my for my drawing. Uh, it's very helpful to be able to see those things as I go. Uh, people who do murals, they do, there's a system, obviously everyone's familiar with the grid system for transferring things, but people who do murals, uh, one of the more popular ones is, uh, there's like scribbles or notes where they like, they either draw scribbles or they draw symbols and stuff like that. And then they, they use, uh, symbols and layouts like that to do all the, um, transferring. In a lot of ways, this is very similar to that. Uh, conceptually at least because I'm using and basically using the same the same concept to transfer everything although I've already drawn it in so it's not so much transfer as it is um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, tighten or refine and part of the reason I like that is because it lets me be very loose in the beginning but also if you notice if, if you look, look at it, um, a lot of the stuff I did is pretty close. Some, some is off, you know, I knew it would be, but a lot of it's pretty close. And I think that working this way has uh, helped me develop, you know, helped me get actually more accurate versus um, being more dependent on this as a crutch. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, but I have a... Um, I have a painting I did from a live model recently, and it was pretty close. Or at least it looks pretty close to proportionate. So I do think that it's a good way of like developing it. Carlos says, I do love the red background from the reference. It's beautiful. I only reason I went purple is because he's purple man in, uh, in that show, in uh, Jessica Jones, and I was a fan of the show. So I decided to make him purple. <laughs> Or the background purple. But the red's so, so good. And it goes well with his skin tone, too. So every once in a while, they'll have someone and they'll just give them the wrong color. And it's just like, oh my god, you're making them look awful. But no, nah, it works really well for him. Yeah, anybody who uses uh, transfer techniques um, in general, just I, I have nothing against any transfer technique. Um, you know, if you want to trace, if you want to project, like, you know, that's all fine. But um, you have to be aware that it, you know, it can it can create bad habits and you can be reliant on it. You know, um, especially especially students, uh, people who are new, uh, when they rely on it too heavily, they they're cheating themselves out of um, developing the skills that they need. And that's just my opinion, but yeah, I think so. I did, I actually tried, I tried to do a, a technique. It's, um, how can I describe it? Um, I recently, I tried to do something where, so I'm in OBS, I can see my painting and I can see my hand, which, you know, makes sense. You can see my, my hand. Uh, so I tried to do a thing where I would, um, essentially, overlay a transparent layer that you couldn't see that you guys couldn't see um, on my screen and I would be able to um, not project but trace on screen like I'd look at my screen I could see where my hand is and I could see the reference overlay and I could trace that way I tried to do that um, 
However, I guess because of how much I'm distorting the, um, because of how much I'm distorting the, the video, um, it, it's inaccurate. Like as much as this looks flat to everybody, this is very, very distorted. And that distortion is slightly, um, changing the, uh, proportions. Very, it's very slight and very subtle. And I don't think it's an issue for watching the video, but when uh, trying to do a uh, tracing, it's an, it's off enough that it's, that I can't use it and do it that way. Uh, which I thought was very interesting because I did not anticipate that being the case. my brain. I was like trying to reach for color. Like, no, I'm not painting right now. I'm scraping right now. I don't need color. Hey, I'm, I'm happy I could share this uh, with you all because usually I can't show or I don't feel comfortable showing the, um, the edits that I do to my, uh, images, um, on stream, like the, and the references and everything. I don't I often don't feel comfortable showing it, but in this case, like, obviously you all have seen him, you know him, it's not a you know, that's not the point here, so I don't mind showing it. I also don't mind doing this because on the show I've seen too many people, I've seen so many people using like tablets and, and all that stuff on the show. I'm just like, yeah, this would be fine to do on the show live. I could do this. Trying to keep the the spirit of the show, even if I'm not on the show. Although Sky, you know, you're welcome to to invite me out for the show. Just saying. I promise not to get mad and take like throw a tantrum and take my painting off the wall and walk out <laughs> in case anyone's curious someone actually did that on the show in one of the early seasons he got mad that he didn't win and felt like it was a waste of time and so he just like walked over to the wall, grabbed his painting off of the wall, and just walked out. Uh. Car, uh... Carlos says, I know sometimes I feel bad for the models because 
many of the artists are staring at their tablets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that the, I do too. Although, here's how I would handle that if I if it was me. Hold on, looks like sorry. Unless you know, unless the what's it called? Unless the presenters told me not to or something. If I was on the show, even if I'm painting from the um, from my tablet a lot, like using my computer or tablet or whatever, which I probably would use it quite a bit. Um, but uh, my thing would be, I would be talking to the, I'd be, t I'd try and talk to the uh, model as much as possible. Um, especially if no one was painting from them directly the whole time. Yeah, I would just talk them up the whole time. Um, because the way I view it is, first of all, I've had friends who have been models. I uh, dated an art model one time for a very short period of time. Um, so I'm kind of comfortable with like hanging out with art models as they're like, you know, modeling and all that. The, the other thing too is like being on that show, like don't get me wrong. I'd love to, you know, if I was on that show, I'd love to win the show. Of course, like obviously I'm not, you know, I think that's the most obvious statement, but my assumption isn't that I would win. Right. And so to me, it, it's a, it's a way of self promotion. I hate to say it. Right. Um, and so I'm going to try and present myself in the best light as I possibly can. Um, and, you know, making connections with people, the famous people who want their portraits and everything, it's like obvious, you know. The thing is, it sometimes comes up, I hate talking about this because it comes off so kind of skeezy sometimes. It has these negative connotations. But it, you know, I, um, the way I got into, um, storyboarding was basically by making connections and getting to know people and so on. But like the, all these people that I gotten to know in the industry and that this is how I got jobs are genuine friends of mine. And so even though it was like networking, it was networking that made me friends, you know, so that's the way I, it's such, I feel like networking has this very negative uh, connotation of like, oh, I'm just going to meet people to like, try and get something out of them. I view it more like I'm trying to make as many friends as I can um, and be in the circles of the types of people that, you know, have interests that I have that are that, you know, are passionate about the same things that I am and so on. And that's how I view like, net, you know, that's how I try and view networking. But um, when talking about it comes off a little, some, I feel like it sometimes comes off the wrong way. Um, yeah. Okay. You have to let mine, Louis says I have to let mine dry. Okay. What are you painting with that you have to let it dry? I'm assuming not oils. Because like, how could you? That would be hilarious if you're like, all right, peace out. I'm painting in oils. I have to let it dry. I'll be back in like a day or two. Watercolor. Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot more sense. Oof, I gotta hurry up.
All right, let's go back to the eyes. Need to get those eyes down. And the top of the lip too. Wait, what am I looking at here? Um, oh, that is the, okay. Sometimes it's hard to see what I'm looking at. It's like there's so much happening. It's actually very difficult to see. It says I want to do this digitally, LOL. I mean, oh, I, you scrubbed, Des says I scrubbed mine starting over with different reference. Okay. You're welcome to do it digitally. There's no, you, you aren't obligated to do it uh, with traditional mediums. I don't know that they would let you on the show with digital, but like, this is not the show. I don't care. Do it digitally. <laughs> No AI, though. No one's allowed to use AI for this. That says I don't touch the AI crap. I know you don't. I was talking in general, not not referring to you. I'm just waiting for the day that someone does that. They go to like portrait artists of the year and they bring a computer and then they like run it through some AI filters and like, here you go, all done. For anyone who wants to uh, use uh, uh, glaze to protect their work or nightshade to poison the well of AI um, uh, data sets, by the way, links are in the description on YouTube to the uh, Chicago University of Chicago's page about that. So just FYI, make it easy. The glaze, you don't even have to run it locally. You can you can sign up for an account and mail and email it to them and they run the glaze for you. Nightshade, they don't do that yet, but they will in the future, I think. Uh, just FYI. You know, for funsies, if that's something you're interested in. And you don't have to do it just on artwork. You can do it on personal photos as well, like portraits, if you take photos. Like, I can't wait till someone's able to put it on a cell phone so that all the phone, all the pictures from your cell phone are automatically, you automatically run through Nightshade. I can't wait for that. I hope someone pulls that, figures that out. I would literally pay money for that service. If that was an option. Alrighty. 
Alrighty. There we go. Cool. Now, all I have to do is paint him in three hours. Easy peasy, right? Yeah. Okay. I have to stretch. My back's like angry at me at the moment. Just a second. Ugh. But yeah, one of the things I really like doing when drawing from a model, I do, I do like talking to the model. I feel like it's a way of getting to know them and it changes how I feel about them. And because it changes how I feel about them, it changes my decisions for, um, you know, painting them, like the feeling I try and give them in the painting changes based off of the feeling I have. So I do like talking to the models. By the way, real quick, I wanted to show this. Um, there's no nudity, uh, Twitch or YouTube, whoever. Yeah, there's no, she's wearing a bodysuit, okay? Um, this I painted from a live model not that long ago. Um, and so no computers, no reference, you know, nothing at all, just standing in front of the model painting. Um, so just wanted to share, uh, you know, because we, I've been talking about it, but yeah. I'll try now. Good. Oh, thanks, Carla. It's mostly, I would consider it a study, but yeah, it was the first time I'd painted outside of this room. Well, not outside of this room, but it's, wait, I'm trying to think. It's the first time I've gone to paint a live model since before COVID. So it's been a while. I felt very rusty the whole time. I was just like, oh my God, I'm going to make a disaster out of this. It came out all right, but you know, the beginning of it was just like, oh, I feel so uncomfortable. Didn't help. I was at, I was at an art studio at the, uh, the um, art school around here in Austin, the Atelier Dojo, which is a really good art school. I highly recommend them. Um, but like I said, it had been the first time I'd been out in forever. And um, I'm, I was the only one wearing a mask at the time. And so I'm, I did, it was like three hours, you know, and I'm just wearing a mask the whole time. Uh, I know most people don't still wear masks. I do. Um, Michelle also started a new job and I was like, I don't want to, I don't want her getting sick. I don't want to bring it, it back with me and get her sick or anything, but yeah. All righty. Uh, All right, let's paint David Tennant. Um. All right, one second, I need a new brush. I don't usually work this large and I'm like, oh, I need, I need something a little larger. Um, 
than what I normally work with. Okay, here we go. I think this will be large enough. Mm, yeah, it's a little larger than my... Okay, that's good. Uh, Meredith says, we have a live model at art school today, and he has been dressed as Napoleon for the sitting. Uh, he's a real trooper. Oh, that's so cool. I d Costumes can be fun, for sure. It just depends. Um, you know, it, it, they can be a lot of fun. All right. Oh, I need more black. Yeah, um, I do. I like both. I like I like painting li nude live models, and I like painting costumed. Um, quick sketches are also can also be a lot of fun. Very challenging. You know what I? I'll tell you my experience. Um, so when I was in LA, I I lived close to um, you know a lot of uh, studios. And, um, one of the studios, um, sorry, not studios. Uh, yes, I did live near studios, but one of the places was, um, what is it called? It's not, is it CNET? Is it CNET? Not CNET. That's a, something else. Oh my God. I'm blanking on the name right now. Anyways. It's a studio. I can't remember the name of it. It's not an art. It's like a, uh, they're connected to the uh, animation, um, you know, and they're connected to the animation, uh, guild and to the animation studios They're uh, and they host, um, they host model drawings and stuff like that. Can't remember what they're called right now. My brain's focused. Um, let's say that instead of fried. Um, and, uh, so a lot of professional people go there, uh, you know, for different things. Uh, they, t they have workshops there sometimes they'll teach, they'll, you know, there's all kinds of stuff, but some of them will go for the, you know, model drawings and stuff like that. And I, I had the experience of going to these, uh, you know, live model sessions and you have these animators um, these artists who are like, who have been animators for like, I don't know, 20, 30 years or something like that. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> and they're doing, you know, quick sketches. And oh my God, it just, they are so good and they are so fast. And it just makes you feel like such a, like, broad or fake, you know, or like nothing. Cause I'm, I can't exp I can't, I don't know that I can do a good job of kind of expressing just how good they are. And also like how quick they are, they, you know, like I do a, it's quick sketches and I do a drawing and, and it's like, oh, okay, kind of, you get the shape, you got everything and they do one. And it's like, you know, they, they added uh, what's it called? shading and everything and just like how how did you do that and why are you even here uh meredith says brilliant to watch and aim for it is although i i have i have uh developed some thoughts and conclusions about that stuff that, uh, might not be, um, I don't know. I, I just, I've come to, to think about it a little different. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yes. Um, uh, but one of the things I noticed over time for some of those people is some of them, this isn't everybody, but 
um, a lot of them, they, um, they're very set in their style, right? So when they go and do this, all the drawings look very much like their drawings, right? It's very, very, like, very set in their ways. Um, and a lot of times when I go for those things, I am trying to learn versus like make a good looking drawing. Um, so I do question, like, are they actually learning anything or are they just like, you know, practicing their style? I do wonder that. Uh, and then, um, you know, so there is a bit of that going on. Like, don't get me wrong. Maybe it's my jealousy. I don't know. Um, but I, I do question that sometimes. And then, um, you know, I do think it's important to kind of distinguish between like when you're trying to make a good drawing versus when you're just trying to learn. I think those are important distinctions to make. Uh, and then the other thing is too, I just think that some people just aren't like, they're just not going to do fantastic drawings in that environment. Like it's just kind of the case. Um, yeah. But, you know, I don't want it to sound like I, I'm dismissing them. Yes, they're amazing. And yes, if you can also be amazing, please be amazing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Okay, I do like this brush. If anyone's curious, the Gray Matters from Jack Richardson says for acrylics because these are synthetics. I don't know how long it will continue to feel this good, but right now it feels really good. I like this brush. All right, it says we have an open uh, session on Sunday and we get uh, professionals in to paint the model and you're always fascinated in everyone's palette and technique, etc. Oh, for sure. That sounds, that sounds awesome. Merida says they're probably using the session as reference for other work. If you're talking about the people that at my thing, no, that wasn't the case. Maybe mental reference because men building up your mental library is important. Yes, that they are. Um, but they weren't using it for any reference directly. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, because they were not taking photos or anything. So like I said, mental, mental library, yes. So when painting hair that covers like, you know, that goes over the, the skin like this. I'm roughing it in right now, but I fully intend to paint over what I just roughed in uh, and then paint it back in it yet again. Like I have no, I most likely will paint right over it. Uh, Meredith says, yes, mental exercise. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely.
getting to the point where I'm going to need to find that uh, paint squeezer because I'm almost out of paint. I need to order more paint too. How are we doing on time? It is almost three, and I started at one twenty. I'm going till it's three. I'm going till five. We're almost halfway done. Oh my god, we're getting close to halfway. Uh, Painting hair is hard. You're doing a beautiful job there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, painting hair is hard. It's also fun. I, I don't know about you. I love painting hair, though, sometimes. sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. Um, one of the things I do with hair that is kind of unconventional, um, because I don't like using uh, liner brushes that much, um, sorry, this <laughs> not quite halfway through, but we're getting close. Um, one of the things I do with hair that is a little unconventional, like I started saying, is I um, I don't like using liner brushes. Um, so I often end up um painting. What is it? Uh, perpendicular to the, to the like, um, to the um, flow of the paint, like the direction it's supposed to go in, and I paint in the, the opposite direct, not the opposite, the um, like ninety degrees of that. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, yeah, it's a technique I've unintentionally kind of developed, and I, I like the look of it, and also I like the idea that it it. Um, it kind of keeps me from doing the thing where like, you know, pe some people will have like, okay, I'm painting, I'm painting grass. Let me go grab my brush that I use for grass. And it's like an old brush with bristles. And it's like, this is my grass brush. I use it to get that grassy texture. And then, you know, they, and then they do hair and it's like, okay, I'm going to use my uh my hair brush to do hair and it's like a bristly brush that gives you that like you know those streaks in it and it, it kind of takes away from the effect like the you know it, um right it says i will try that with hair then yeah absolutely it's it's worth trying um see if you like it so it just kind of keeps me from like going down that that route of like, oh, I'm going to grab this brush so I can make this kind of effect. So it's like, okay, you can't make that effect when you're doing it like without, you know, um, you can't get that effect if you're doing that that way. So now you just have to do it right kind of thing. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but yeah. That is too dark. Like the thing I think about a lot is, um, and I, I don't mean, I'm not trying to like disparage the guy, but I, I do think of, um, uh, Bob Ross. I love Bob Ross. I really like Bob Ross. I really do. Like I like, he seems like 
I feel like I would have really liked him as a person. Um, and I like that he's getting, you know, his mission was to get more people into art. So I really do like a lot of things about Bob Ross. And I think he was incredible um, in his own right, because like the, the things he did for, for the show, like the way he, you know, uh, he would paint, like he would do the whole show in like, I think a week or something like that. All the episodes he did like three and he did like three paintings of the same thing. You know, he'd do the same painting like three times and all this other stuff is incredible. Like I, I really do think he was, um, you know, I, I do think very highly of him. However, I'm not a fan of his art. Like, I just don't like it that much. And I don't like the style that he has. Um, and I don't like the way he's using, like, he uses, like, templates of how to do things. It's like, okay, I need to paint a, you know, uh, a tree, this type of tree. I better get my fan brush and do it exactly this way. And you always get that kind of tree. Like, okay, cool. Not what I want to do with my paintings, though. Rinsky. Good evening. Does anyone have a good soft brush for oil paints for me? I am looking for some flat. Um, well, okay. Rosemary and Co. and uh, Trakel are two brands that are considered the top of the line. FYI. So those ones are good. Um, I'm right now I'm using a gray matters, uh, Jack Richardson for acrylic. It's synthetic, but you can use it for, uh, oils. It's pretty soft. It's not ultra soft, but it's pretty soft. Um, and silver silk 88, uh, is the line. It's a flat brush. Oh, they have all kinds. Um, silver silk 88 is also a soft brush. Um, so yeah. I hope that's helpful. Don't buy Zen brushes. The silver Zen brushes, don't get these. I re I'm really enjoying this Grey Matters one. I don't know how long it's going to last. I'm also not a great, uh, uh, what's it called? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, I'm not great with my brushes, so I kind of ruin them fast. So I might not be a good gauge. Uh, Meredith, what paint are you mixing together for that purple? Once I'll answer that in a second. Uh, Rinsky says, thank you so much. Love your painting. Love the hair. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And absolutely happy to help. Uh, I hope those work. Also, anything that's like, um, uh, I think it's like golden tel uh, talon or talcon or something like that. The synthetic brushes, all of those are very soft. They are very, very soft. So if you need very soft, like the, basically they're watercolor brushes, the synthetics. I don't know how good they are for oils, but if if what you're looking for is like soft, soft, that might be also something. Also, a lot of them are very, very cheap. So they probably won't hold their shape for a long time, but they're also very, very cheap. So, you know, it's a trade off. Uh, okay, Meredith, uh, what paint are you mixing together for that purple? Uh, I'm mixing my quinacridone rose and my phthalo blue uh, and some white. I mixed in some white as well. Yep. But yeah, um, that, that's all. One thing I love about my palette, there's not a ton of options uh, as far as like when you're like, what, how do I make this color? You know, <laughs> I, I do actually like that. It makes life easier. I was, I forget who it was. If I, if I was watching something or talking to someone, someone was talking about, um, they had a teacher who had a palette of like 16 colors, I think it was, or maybe more. They, they would have like multiple, like three different greens and 
two or three different blues and it, and I was just like, uh, how do you paint like that? That seems horrifyingly difficult. Like it's just too many options. I, I don't need, I don't want that many options. Uh, yeah. Thalo blue. Nice. Yeah. Thalo blue is a fantastic color. However, it is, um, a monster bully. So you have to be real, real gentle with it. Um, because it so quickly takes over everything The the huge disadvantage of, uh, Thalo blue, unfortunately, but it, it, the thing, okay. The thing that's really good about my palette is that unlike other blues and reds and all those, like, you know, cause like if you use, if you use, um, what's it called? Uh, ultramarine blue, you can't get like a cerulean blue out of it. You can't get that turquoise, but you can with this. Uh, and that's the special, that's what I think is special about my palette, about my, the colors I chose is that you can get, you don't have to do a split palette, like a split primary palette because, um, all the colors I have can easily lean in either direction. Uh, Meredith says my purple tube of paint, uh, dried hard in the tube. And I'm so upset about it. that is very, very strange. Um, that is not very common, uh, for paint, you know, paint to do. All right, everybody, we have a little guest here today. Um, I just have to minimize my, uh, my screen or my OBS screen. Hey everyone. Welcome. So uh, let me minimize my screen. Um, so I can't see myself, but the reason is because we have a little guest here. It is Dresden. Dresden is scared of my monitor because Dresden saw himself in my monitor one time. And now he thinks that there is a cat that he doesn't know that lives in my monitor. So he's scared of it. And if he sees himself in the monitor, he's extra scared. You don't have to, you don't have to look at the monitor, little boy. There's nothing there. No cat there. See, he keeps looking towards my screen because he's like, where is that other cat? I know he's in there. I know he's in there. He's not in there. It's you, little boy. It was you the whole time. Such a little scaredy cat. No, no. Oh, little boy. Mm-hmm. His name is Dresden, for anyone who doesn't know. He very much embodies being a ginger cat. He is so sweet though. And I love him dearly. We have two other cats and a dog. Who I also love, but Dresden's my little boy. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Louis says, drink water, everybody, and then, like, does a bunch of random stuff as their keyboard, their pigeon jumped on the keyboard. That's funny. He's, uh, Dresden's gorgeous. Yeah, he's so cute. He's not bright, but he's cute. Oh, shoot. Uh, just realized something. Let me... All right. Um, how old is Dresden? My cat's almost 12. Ooh, nice. 12. Uh, no, Dresden's, uh, I think he's four now, maybe three. I can't, I'm not sure. I have to look. Meredith says my cat died July last year. 
uh, and been miserable without him. Yeah, I know that feeling. We, in 2018, we had a cat that passed away, and it was it was hard. Um, let me show you. I have these paintings I did. Um, these are oh wait no not this one. Tristan, what are you doing, little boy? Oh, it's a little troublemaker. Uh, not that one. Ah, uh, here we go. So here is a painting, two paintings I did. Um, I did these of my cat's favorite things after she passed away. Uh, I didn't feel I could paint her. And I didn't want to look at photos of her the whole time. Uh, but I painted her favorite things. And um, I have about two or three other paintings of her favorite things as well. Uh, other, other things. Um, other paintings. Um, yeah, I found that painting her absence uh, was very, very helpful for me. Um, and I'm sorry for your loss, Meredith. I, I, I am. Also, um, everyone keep an eye out. There's a, um, there's a, a new vaccine for cats. It's not out yet, but it's, um, it's going through trials and it's supposed to help cats with their, um, I think it's liver disease. That is the underlying cause of a lot of cat mortality. So, um, hopefully it'll help cats live longer once it's approved. Um, that's so sweet, Meredith. Yeah, it's so sweet. I'm sorry for your loss, though. It's hard. You don't have to paint them. But, you know, like I said, I, I found it easier to paint her favorite things than her. So, yeah. Um, let's see. I know there was a question that I'm missing. Okay, Dresden, like I said, is three or four. I can't remember. I think he's four now at this point. Um, there was a question about paints. Hold on. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, um, Carla asked, what brand uh, are my paints? Okay. Um... I use a variety of brands. Um, Win uh, Windsor Newton, Gamblin, and uh, M. Graham. Um, and um, yeah. Uh, those are the main ones. I use, I do use, um, uh, what's it called? Um, Rublev Oleo Gel. I like this as a medium. And, uh, right now I'm using, I'm using this, uh, great white, uh, paint from, um, what is it? Uh, Jerry's Artorama. Cause it was, uh, very economical and I thought I'd give it a shot. Uh, but yeah, those, uh, those brands are the ones I go to for the most part. Uh, and I like, I think I like the consistency of M Graham more than the others. Um, but it's a little more expensive and it's not always, uh, uh, you know, it just depends. Like they, they're really annoying the way like some, some companies have like the big tube of this color, but not this color. And you know, they're kind of annoying with that stuff. So, just kind of all depends. Uh, but I'm, br I'm pretty brand agnostic uh, for the most part. I like M. Graham's creamier, smoother, softer. I like that, but it's not a mandatory, you know. Uh, yeah. Justin, go. Little boy, I am trying to do a competition right now. Yeah, yes, I am. So you, you go. 
You sit down in my chair, okay? I promise I will play with you later. I feel bad. He wants attention. I would... It's really annoying, though. I would actually... I have a couple of things. I would, like, wear a bag and have him, like... Or a backpack and have him on me while I paint. If he would uh, cooperate. But he will not cooperate with me on that. Yeah, Meredith. Uh, I will say this. Um, this was for me personally. I don't... This doesn't apply. Not... You know, everyone's different. So, like, I'm not trying to... But for me personally, painting my cat, uh, you know, uh, missing, like missing my cat and everything was really helpful because it let me, per I think, I don't know exactly how the process works in our brain, but to me it seemed like what it did was it allowed me to focus on her uh, in a way, but because I was painting and focused on the... Um, you know, I was very much focused on the technical side of like making sure I have my proportions right, you know, making sure everything's in the right place, getting the right colors, just all the non, you know, painting uh, stuff. It allowed me to kind of process my loss without, um, you know, having to kind of, I don't want to say deal with it because that sounds like I was trying to run away from it, but it just, at times, you need a break. And I felt like that really helped with that. Um, and I, f I do feel like it helped me get through the grief uh, faster. And I know, once again, that sounds like I'm, like, running away from it. But I, I just mean it, the, you know, the, yeah, I guess just the grief part. Because I remember her, I'm still sad, but but I have good memories of, of her, uh, her name, her name was Stripes. She was originally Michelle's cat, my girlfriend. Um, but I lived with her for like five years. So she was very much my cat at that point. Um, yeah. So I, I feel like, I don't know. I felt like that really helped in a lot of ways. Um, but once again, that's, you know, personal, that's for me personally, it might not apply or help anybody else. Just thought I'd mention it. Uh, yeah. Some of my other cats will come in here occasionally. I'll, I'll, br I'll put them on screen when they do, if I can, if I can grab them in time. Meredith, I agree with Carla. That's it, really sweet. Um, I think it was Carla who asked about the paint I'm using, but one of the things I hate about... Um, paint brands is the variation between colors, between brands. It's very frustrating. Um, I hate that I have to, uh, like I have to buy a small tube of every, every paint I want, I have to buy a small tube of it first to check and make sure it's, you know, uh, it's the right color kind of thing. And so I sometimes will buy like, I'll buy the paint I know I've used before, and then I'll buy another one of the same kind from a different brand 
just to check it out and see if it's, you know, what I want or whatever. It's very frustrating. Especially with certain colors, the, the variation can be wild, but it's almost all colors, honestly. I do wish they sold, um, what's it called? Um, samples. Yeah, I really wish that the company sold samples. Um, I have one tube from, um, oh, what is that other Williamsburg, but I, I don't feel like I can properly, um, what's it called critique it based off of one tube. Um, I've heard good things about Williamsburg, uh, the tube I have, I'm not overly crazy about, but you know, once again, I, I'm not sure I'm willing to critique a off of one tube. Um, oh, another thing is for anyone who's interested, uh, don't, it's so hard to say this, but I'm not a fan of, um, I'm not a big fan of, uh, this, uh, Gamblin's 1980 line. They're very stiff and waxy and I don't like them. Uh, they're, they're very economical, but I, I just don't like them. Also, there is like no point in buying, um, their cadmium colors because they're essentially hues. What they do is they claim that there's real cadmium in it, but it's like a mix of like a little bit of cadmium and then a bunch of other colors to make it into a hue. Uh, so just FYI. Also, if anyone wants to get, buy oil paint and they want to go into um, water soluble oils, I don't have a ton of experience with that. But I will say, do not buy um, like the cheapest of those kind. Go with go with a more well known brand for that. I also really want to try. Um, what are they called? Um, I've heard good things, oh, I've heard good things about a few companies, um, of course, uh, but one of them I want to try is, um, Michael Harding, but they're very expensive. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe, maybe I'll be able to pick some up at the Portrait Society. I don't know if they're going to be there, but we'll see. I have the Artisan and uh, Norma Blue Water Soluble Paint. You love these. Uh, Ar the, is the Artisan... The Artisan is uh, Windsor Newton, right? I've heard good things about Windsor Newton's water solubles. I've never used them. I can't speak to them. I just, I, like I said, I bought like the cheapest brand, which was Reeves. Don't buy that. All right. I need to focus. I need to remember that I have a limited time. I need to focus on uh, the face. I'm just having said that I'm going to put in some of the jacket now. I recognize what I just did. I'm still going to do it though. Real quick. Let's just get in some of the shape of the jacket, just a little bit of it, you know? And then, uh, yeah. I'll rely on the, the like sketch lines for a lot of it because of the time limitation, but yeah, just want to get some of this in there. Uh, 
uh, Rinsky. By the way, if I'm mispronouncing your name, please let me know. I apologize in, in advance. But uh, Rinsky says, uh, yes, the correct, that is the, um, the Windsor-Newton version. Yeah, I've heard good things about those ones. Like I said, I, I bought the Reeves ones, and those were horrible and smelly, by the way. Uh, I do not recommend them. Um, but I, I did kind of uh, cool on the idea of using the water-soluble paints once I, once I learned that you're not supposed to mix them with water, but rather just use the water for cleanup. Kind of stole the thunder out from under those for me, personally. By the way, in case anyone's curious, the black I'm using, um, I use uh, uh, Mars Black. And the thing about Mars Black is I think it's not as black as um, Ivory Black, also known as Bone Black, which is, by the way, why I don't use it. Um, that's why I don't buy Ivory Black. Uh, but... Um, Honestly, it, it looks just as black to me. The it, thing I like about Mars Black is it is, um, because all the colors on my palette are very, very strong, uh, I need a, I, I need, all my colors need to be very strong, being able to like stand up to each other. Uh, and Mars Black does that very well. So yeah. Yeah, I also only paint with synthetic brushes because I refuse to use uh, animal hair brushes. Um, you know, that, that is a personal choice. I'm not going to give people a hard time uh, for their choices. But I will say, my personal opinion, I do not feel like I'm missing out on anything at this point. The synthetic brushes are very good. Uh, oh, and for salt, uh, for uh, mediums, I know I mentioned that I use uh, oleo gel. I do like oleo gel. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, I also use just regular uh, linseed oil, or I also use walnut oil. I actually prefer walnut oil to linseed oil, uh, generally speaking. Um, and then... Um, uh, Gamblin makes a solvent-free uh, gel, which is similar to oleo gel. I don't like it as much, but it's very, very close. It's not a, it's not a world of difference between them. We'll put it that way. Um, but yeah, that I'd mention that in case I don't use solvents in my painting process for the most part. I use it to clean up and stuff, but I'm very, I'm very, um, what's it called? hesitant to use solvents because I have cats and they are very uh, sensitive to fumes and I too am sensitive to fumes and I don't have um, what's it called the best ventilation most of the time. Uh, Rinsky says yeah you can but I'm using linseed oil that is water soluble you have asthma really bad that's uh why i use water soluble that's fair i don't like i said i don't use solvents in my painting um for 
Like I, I do a little, but you can, I could, I could manage without them altogether. I mostly use them for cleanup, like I said. Um, none of the painting uh, mediums that I use have solvents in them. I don't use any of them ones that do, but I totally understand. I'm not, uh, I'm just, I'm, for the most part, I agree with you. Uh, I just ended up going the regular, the regular route because uh, I had such a bad experience with Reeves that I ended up, you know, uh, just going to normal, you know, quote unquote, normal paint. Normal is not the right word, but you know, traditional, regular, non water soluble. All right. All right, I need to focus on his face now. I really do. Time's ticking away. Oh my God, it's ticking away so fast. I am sorry if you guys heard me swallowing. I didn't realize the microphone would pick it up. I also don't use, um, this is something uh, people might, un uh, I use a paper towel when I, when I paint, uh, to wipe my brush. I do not have a tub of, um, oil or solvent or anything where like I swish my brush in and clean it. I don't do that. I basically paint with a dirty brush the whole time. I will like mix some oil into my brush and kind of use that to like, like I'll dip my, I have a little, you know, thing of oil and I'll dip my brush into it and I'll use that to kind of help clean my brush while I paint. But I, I don't, um, I don't use a, a tank to clean my brushes or anything. Uh, so most of the time I'm using some somewhat dirty brushes. There are ways of cleaning it more or less. It just kind of depends on the, on what I'm working on and how I'm painting and so on. I also don't use multiple brushes. A lot of people do that. They'll use like one brush for lights, one brush for darks, all that. I don't do any of that. I tried. I'm, um, I just can't keep, keep it up. I end up just like mixing, mixing them all together and it ends up being a mess. And so I just stop trying after a while. Uh, Rinsky says, you have a good painting session. I have to go. A busy day tomorrow. Love the way you help. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I hope you have a good, good night, a good day tomorrow. And thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I paint three times a week, by the way, uh, or stream three times a week. Um, I stream uh, Monday night, Wednesday night, and Sunday afternoon or evening. Um, this is all like uh, Austin, Texas time or uh, central time. But yeah. Louise, who is that? Who is that organized? Oh, oh. Um, yeah, um, I, I know, right? Um, Mark Carter is, um, he seems to be at least. Um, but yeah, I've seen, pe I've seen painters like that. They look like Wolverine when they paint. It's kind of cool because they'll have like five brushes in their hand, like, you know, like, you know, all hanging out of their fist as they, as they paint. Um, yeah, I don't know how they do it though. I'm definitely not organized enough to, to keep track of them. And so they, so I, I usually just end up using like, I use multiple brushes, but, uh, basically I'm using multiple brushes purely for shape or size. Like if there's a reason I need a particular sh 
size or shape uh, for the most part. Yeah. But I do have some other tools to help me get clean marks if I really need it. Uh, you know, there's always, um, what's it called? Um, there's always uh, palette knives and like the paint pushers or squeegee thingies, you know? Like there's always those types of things too. Um, but the other thing too is you can clean your brush a lot better than you think uh, using just other paint. You just kind of work it through. Uh, the thing too is that when you, if you load up your brush with a lot of paint uh, versus, um, you know, scrubbing into it, that will, like if you start scrubbing your brush in, you'll, you'll have a lot of your older paint coming out. But if you load your brush up with a lot of paint and you don't scrub, you'll, um, you know, you'll just put down the paint that's on the, on the surface kind of thing. Uh, Louis says, I end up with five brushes in my hand, but I never know what is what. Yeah. See, I, that's why I stopped. I, I only use, I, like I said, I only use them for size differences and maybe shape if there's a particular reason. I don't know. Yeah. I, I just, I, I couldn't, I tried, I tried. I just, it ended up just being more of a hassle than it was worth kind of thing. Part of me wants to buy one of those, um, what are they called? Um, oh my God. What are those palettes that you hold? What are they called? Are they just palettes or is there, there a term for them? My brain's like completely fried at the moment for words. Words are hard, okay? Um, what are those called? Is, my, is there a word for them or am I, am I being stupid? Probably being stupid. Generally my assumption. Uh, but anyways, those um, those palettes that you hold in your hand, I, I bought one and it was trash and I, I regret it. Um, it's, it's garbage. Um, and then uh, I thought about buying a good one, um, but I... Um, I don't know that I could, I don't know how comfortably I could use it because of how, because I use a dirty brush all the time and I want to, I often want to wipe it. And like I, one thing I do is I do grab the bristles and with the paper towel and squeegee out all the paint every once in a while when I need to. Um, but yeah, I use, I use the paper towel a lot and I feel like if I have the palette in my hand, I don't know that how comfortable that would be. But I'm only going to ever use one of, want to use one of those palettes if I'm working on a big, big painting. Uh, Carlos says, I always wanted to try handheld palette. Maybe it looks easier than I think. Uh, so th this is worth talking about. Uh, actually glad we kind of made our way here. Google says wooden handheld palette. Okay, fair enough. All right. Um, so here's the thing, okay? Here's something to keep in mind when when painting and using a palette in general, right? Um, you notice that I have my palette right next to my painting. Even though this is a glass palette and vertical glass palettes tend to kind of slide, like the paint has a tendency to slide down, um, which it does sometimes. Um, but the reason I have it like this is, uh, A, so you guys can see it, but more, actually even more important than that, sorry, um, but priority for me, it has the same light. The light on my palette and the light on my painting are the same. The, it's the same color, it's the same direction, it is the same. Um, and I, I learned this from when I tried plein air painting, I was having 
a hard time and I was like, I don't understand. I mix my color on my palette and then I put it on the canvas and it's just not the same. And, I'm, and what I realized is my palette was facing up and my canvas was facing me. And so my palette was having a, the blue sky reflect into it, affecting all my colors. And that does happen at home too, not to that extent, but it does happen at home too. Everything around you is going to reflect into your paint. Um, and the, the angle at which the light hits it is going to change the, you know, everything. So having them side by side like this to me is, I don't want to say very important, but it is important. Especially, it was way more important when I first started. I feel like now I can compensate for it a lot better. But when I first started, uh, this was very, very important to me. Like I said, now, now I feel a little more confident in my, uh, in my abilities. And I feel like I could kind of compensate if I needed to. Um, yeah. How do you keep your palette up? Oh, um, I'll show you. Oh, one second. Uh, oh, that's right. Sorry, I just I had it, I had it in mind. I wanted to get this in. Um. Yeah. Uh. I'm not going to move my camera because I would hate to have to deal with moving my camera right now. Um, but should have a other. Oh, okay. Back here. One second. My room is a bit of a disaster zone at the, at the moment, but, um, I have this, I have, three of these and um, they hold up my palette. And then um, my painting is also, my, so my painting is on a board. Um, like, so you see how this painting, like you, you see the tape, this painting is on a board. All my paintings are on boards in one way or another. Usually I just, I mean, I'll be honest. Usually I just tape them into play on place. Right. And then the board is held this, uh, this white, you can kind of see here on the edge. This is the board. It is held. You see this color right here, the under the palette, like next to the palette. This is a third board. So what it is, is I have one big board. And then I clamp my, my painting and my palette to that big board. Does that make sense? Uh, the advantage of that too, is that when I need to switch paintings, I just take the board off and put a new one and clamp it into place. But the board is always in, I don't have to move my, my, uh, uh, my easel much to do that. And then I can take my palette off very easily and put it into the, um, the airtight container and keep my paints fresh for longer. So, so yeah. But yeah, that's how I do it. Great idea. Thank you for showing us. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to. That's how I do it. One of the things I strive for, and I've talked about this before, um, but if you're new here or, you know, just, and if you're a new painter, especially, and, or if time's an issue, one of the things I found is trying to minimize setup and uh, tear down time. Uh, my setup and tear down time for painting, I'm not going to count streaming here because streaming's kind of adds a lot more to it but just painting very fast. Um, 
you know, not including getting my reference ready and all that stuff, of course, it's kind of different. But if I'm just talking about, like, if we're just talking about, like, getting my, my, uh, let's say I have a painting I'm working on. So the time it takes me to tear down and then uh, set up next time I go to paint, um, <laughs> it is very fast. Uh, tear down is probably longer under 30 minutes, like maybe 15, maybe 10. Uh, I just take the board, put it in my uh, thing, and then I usually uh, will clean my brushes and that's it. I don't wash my brushes, I just clean them. I don't actually wash, wash my brushes uh, until uh, I have to. Uh, they it takes too long. So I try, I try to avoid washing them. I just clean them and then keep them wet until my next painting session. I don't actually wash them unless I know I'm not going to use them for days. If I know I'm not going to use them for days, I will, I will actually wash them with like water and soap and stuff like that. And if someone's curious about uh, cleaning brushes, I can talk about that real quickly. Might as well. Um, the way I clean my brushes is I um, I wipe them down as as best I can. Uh, you want to? You always want to do that. The more paint you can take off with, uh, you know, with uh, what's it called, like a paper towel or something, the better because it just makes it easier. And then, um, and then I have a tub of uh, solvent of Gamsol. I op it's airtight. I open that up briefly just to like swish my brushes through a few times and wipe them down. Uh, then I seal that back up. Uh, also, I make sure my cats aren't here when I do that. By the way, just FYI. Um, and then, and then I. Um, open up my, um, I have another tub of safflower oil and I clean my brushes in that. And then I just leave them wet, um, uh, until I paint next. Some people do stuff like some people will leave their, uh, their, their, uh, brushes in oil until they paint next, which I've heard is actually very viable. Um, some people will, of course, some people will clean every single time, but you know, I'm not going to do that clearly. Um, some people don't even clean them. They just, like I said, leave them suspended in oil. Um, some people use uh, baby oil, my understanding it, or vegetable oil. My understanding is those are both not good to do because the reason they do that is because ve vegetable oil or baby oil uh, or minerals, mineral oil, whatever it's called, also known as baby oil, uh, it doesn't dry, but uh, you don't want to introduce non-drying uh, oil into your oil painting because you want it to dry. So I would I would refrain personally from using those things. Also, safflower oil is all can also be problematic for the um, what's it called for your painting's longevity, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I wipe most of it off. So my understanding is it's a quantity thing. Like you, a little bit isn't going to be a big deal. Um, it's if you use safflower oil instead of like linseed oil is when it becomes an issue is my understanding. So I, I try to avoid it using a lot of it. Oh, actually, I don't use any of it in my painting. Just sometimes there's a little residue left on my brush, but it's so minimal. I'm not worried about it. Okay. I almost forgot. I almost forgot. There was one other thing I wanted to change in this painting. Almost forgot. So glad I didn't forget. Not the ear. I just got distracted by the ear. Thanks, ADHD. Appreciate it.
I will get to the change momentarily. Here we go. All right. So, by the way, if anybody wants to show their work so far, let me know. I'm happy to happy to take a break and show everyone's work. You know how they do like a halfway through kind of thing on the show? I'm happy to do the same kind of thing. We're a little past the halfway point, but I'm still happy to do it. So if anybody wants to, uh, all you have to do is post in the Discord channel that, um, and I, I will show it. Uh, the main difference was I wanted to change his eye direction a little. I know, not big changes. I recognize that, but it's fun. It's little, little stuff. Oh, also for anyone who's curious about brush cleaning, the other thing I will mention is uh, people use all people use all kinds of products to clean. Uh, the the um, the one that I prefer personally when I do wash my brushes is the Murphy's oil soap. I use that one to clean my brushes. Uh, yeah, that's my go-to. I've tried some of the other like quote unquote artist ones that they sell at the art stores. I, I've, I've not been a fan of most of them, so I end up using that one. His mouth is definitely wrong here. Um, but I will fix it in just a second. Actually, I think I might end up doing another taking another photo and making sure that everything is in the right place in a minute because i suspect that i may have messed something up as i went through it uh, maybe i'll do it a little later though time is of the essence right now The eyes are throwing me off. I need to fix that. One of the things that a lot of people uh, make the mistake on eyes is they um, 
they have a tendency to make the whites of the eye like very bright or very white. Uh, they're usually about the same or darker and sometimes of like the skin around the eyes or like the, you know, cheek or, you know, cheekbone kind of thing. Uh, usually about that or darker than the cheekbone because the cheekbone often grabs light. Um, so yeah. And then the color wise, it's usually kind of like a warmish off white kind of, it, it changes based off of the lighting, of course. Um, but yeah, same thing with teeth. People have a tendency of doing teeth very, very bright. And usually teeth are much darker than you think, uh, simply because they're in shadow. Also, they're usually kind of yellow or a warmish color because they're also, you have to remember, they're reflecting, they're reflecting the inside of your mouth a lot of times, you know? So they have a warm tint to them and also yellow because, like, let's be honest, a lot of people's teeth are yellow. I think mine are, unfortunately. Uh, that's what I get for drinking so much coffee. Um, but yeah. Um, That is something to be aware of. All right. All right, I think I'm going to have to grab my smaller brush now. I don't want to overdo it with blending. That is something that um, I want to be cautious of um, in general. That's something I'm cautious of. This brush is a little firmer than the one I was using it. So I'm getting all these like brush, like bristle marks in it. And I'm not entirely upset about that, to be honest. I used to be more, like I used to like flatter uh, brush marks, but uh, I've been enjoying adding a little more impasto to my work lately. And yeah, I don't mind more brushy bristles in my uh, in my painting. Also, the good thing about bristly, br like thick brush, it, brush marks is they're very easy to get rid of. You know, if, if you make mistakes or anything, you can always just like scrape them off real easy. Even if they're dry, because they're so thick, you can just grab a palette knife and scrape it off. By the way, don't sand your paintings, anybody, because... Um, not worth the the health risk all the all the toxic pigments and crap that they put it's not worth it in my opinion personally if you are going to sand it though be aware of what you're doing because yeah you don't want to breathe that stuff in but it's different when you're like scraping with a palette knife it's more like uh cutting it off kind of thing
I really want to buy a dioxazine purple or something like that. But I do, I'm worried that I'm like going to buy it, try it out and be like, oh, this is a beautiful color and then never touch it again. Part of me is regretting one thing about this choice. Painting um, stubble is a huge pain in the ass. So I kind of am regretting that choice. Who else is doing Michael uh, or Michelle? Sorry, how is she coming along? I told you all, you're welcome to post in the Discord and I will share it uh, during the during the thing. Has anybody posted, by the way? I don't think so, but I'll check. Yeah, no one's posted yet. That's fine. I understand if no one wants to post. You're not, no obligation, under no obligation. But yeah, the, um, the stubble is um, a pain in the ass. Something also I'll mention a lot of times um, in faces and portraits and stuff like that, um, especially on individuals with light skin, um, we see um, or we think we see like blues and greens and all these like colors. And sometimes they're there and there's nothing wrong with painting those colors in, but... A lot of times when we think, oh, that's, you know, this green or this bluish color or whatever, a lot of times it's just a desaturated color or like a grayish color. Often it's just a desaturated yellow that's next to some warm colors and that makes it look bluish or whatever. Um, so just keep keep that in mind uh, when you're working on stuff. Um, if you're using reference from the computer, you can color pick to see how accurate you're picking your colors. It's always helpful. Uh, it is a crutch, but uh, crutches are useful sometimes to an extent, right? All right, uh, let's see. His stubble is driving me so nuts that I moved to working on his ear out of desperation. Stop, says, Okay. Well, um, if 
if you want advice on the stubble, here's how I would. Obviously, it's hard to tell without seeing your painting, but here's the advice I hold on a second. Here's the advice I would give on stubble in general. Okay. Um, when painting stubble, the thing that I personally try and do is I try and average out the color and just paint the average out color. Then in the places of transition, I will usually tr paint the skin color a little into the into the stubble and then I will use the like the stubble color uh, to paint back into that to get some of that like um, to get some of that texture uh, and you know shape and then uh, the other thing I, I focus on is uh, places where like on his chin where because of the shape the stubble is changing um, color and everything and so there once again very similar to like the edges I would I would paint more of the skin tone and then paint the stubble kind of on top or into it however in broad strokes I am not looking to um, I am not looking to paint uh, every single um, you know, every single hair. All right. So what I'm doing right now is just downloading the image again. Uh, I'm just going to put it up. I have about a little over an hour to go. So I'm going to try and put it up, put it here so that I can see, um, you know, where, uh, you know, if I'm, um, what's it called? If anything I'm painting is off. And I will share that with you guys in just a moment again. Well, yeah, that's, that's my recommendation on stubble and beards. It's not easy, though. Those are hard things to deal with, honestly. All right, so I'll show you all, and you can see that as I was painting, I'm, like, it's so funny how... As I'm painting, I actually am messing up what I'm painting, and now I have to refix a ton of things. So it's not a big deal. Uh, it's a little more of a big deal with time limits, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. So. Here, let me show you all. All right. So you can see um, that the, um, what's it called? Can you see my uh, cursor here? No, you can't. Okay. But you can see that like the back of the head, the hairline, the ear, I enlarged too much. Not a big deal. The eye, the big thing is the, the eye. I moved the eye like drifted down a bit. That's probably the biggest deal uh, here. Um, the shape of the chin is a little off and that needs to be fixed. Um, yeah.
Yeah, so the eyes are a little off. Uh, some of the eyes being off is okay, because like I said, I wanted to change the direction of the eyes, but some of it's not. Also, the bridge of the nose got moved a bit. That's the thing. I, I've said this before. I, um, I, I don't think I've ever been really good at painting or coloring inside the lines when I was younger. Um, I'm like really good for most of it, but then I'll like have moments where I just go out. Um, so, uh, I'm not, so I don't worry about keeping everything perfect the whole time. I know that I'll be able to course correct and push everything into the right place. How's the stream, guys, by the way? I, I got a warning, and I'm, I'm not sure if, what's going on. So let me know if the stream's stuttering or anything. Also, some of his nose stuff is a little out of place. It's all good. I'll just fix it right now. Uh, it's perfect. No stuttering. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. I don't know what's going on. I, once again, I, I, it happens every time I open up the discord view. So I wonder, I wonder if it has to do with that. Um, uh, because every time I, I show the discord on, on stream is when I get that notification. So I wonder what something about that is causing it. So this is pretty close. This is slightly off, but I knew this would be off. So that's cool. Discord takes a lot of juice on your PC. I don't, yeah, uh, maybe that's what it is. I, I wonder if it's also that it's not pushing out a lot of pixels because like nothing's happening on it. So like the bit rate drops uh, and, it, and, and uh, YouTube thinks that like the, there's a problem with the bit rate versus there just being like nothing to show kind of thing. Uh, this happens when I don't talk. When I don't, when I stop talking for a while on stream, YouTube sh gives me a warning that like uh, my my audio bit rate is like very low or non-existent, and I, and I'm just like, yeah, you're not getting any sound because I'm not talking, not because you know, my stream is having an issue, but thanks. I appreciate it, YouTube. So that might be it too. I don't know. I have to do some tests. There's a few setting thingies I want to change in my stream just like nothing major just all little things I want to test out and see if I can improve things for me and everybody uh yeah nothing important Mm 
Louis says, yes, my laptop hates Discord. Yeah. My computer should not have any problems with most of this stuff right now. Uh, I, I, I built my, com I built a computer recently. I, um, I bought all my parts during the holiday sales and I built a desktop for myself, which is probably the most economical way you can, you know, do it. Probably not always, but yeah, I tried. Uh, it's not a monster computer. I wish it was it, like, I don't have, you know, like whatever you, if anyone knows about computers, I don't have like a 1090 or anything in my computer. I would like one. I just can't afford it. Cause like, and I couldn't, I couldn't find one even if I could afford it because of uh, all the like shortages and everything, but still should be able to handle anything I throw, any of these things I throw at it. I was very tempted to get a Mac. Um, they're, they're just so the, the, ever since the M one chips, they're so good for certain things. I was very tempted if I could, if I could afford a Mac and a PC, you know, I would have, because I also like to game and Macs aren't great for that, but kind of had to go all in on one. But yeah, I have an old um, uh, Surface Pro 3 from way back when. And uh, every time I open Discord on it, the f it, it sounds like it's about to take off. The fans are just like, <laughs> ramp up. It's like, okay, we're about to achieve flight here. All right, everybody. Got almost a little like five minutes over an hour left and I'll give it some grace. We're not like on the clock, like the show, but an hour, basically, let's just say an hour for now. Uh, no, we actually have over 45 minutes. Um, we have an hour and five minutes. I, I started painting about 120, so 520 would be four hours. And I'm willing, I, I said, uh, time wise for me, I put till five, but I'm willing to go to five. Uh, I'm willing to go till six. That was just like the minimum time. So I'm, I'm willing to stay a bit later to show everybody's artwork and so on.
So yeah, um, I just put that in the in the thing. So in case I couldn't go longer or anything, you know, I wanted to I wanted to put the like minimum I'm committed to, and then you know I don't mind staying longer if I can, which I I, I think I can. I just you know it's a lot, so I just wanted to be you know cautious. And for anyone watching this uh, right now or after the fact, if you can't finish today, that's fine. Uh, you're welcome to share after the fact if you're watching after the fact. I'm totally down to see people's artwork afterwards. Um, also, if like you need to leave for whatever reason and come back, like, you know, understandable. Also, something that everyone here is welcome to do. Well, you see, yeah, I had to go to bed. No worries. I don't know how you're typing if you had to go to bed, but, you know, I understand. In general. Like when you ask someone, are you awake? And they say no. It's like, how does it, uh, okay. Sabra says, gotta go to bed as well. It was fun painting with you. I'll show tomorrow. Absolutely, no worries. You brought the computer with you. <laughs> All right, that makes sense. That makes total sense. Well, thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. Um, maybe next time I will try and do it earlier in the day because it sounds like that might be an issue. So maybe I'll try, if I do one of these again, I'll try doing it earlier in the day. Um, at least a little. But everybody, please share. I'd love to see your work. And... Um, uh, also, um, you know, you can share like what it was like after four hours and then share again later what it was like after, you know, six hours, if you want to put more work into it. A lot of the people who work on the, on the show, they will actually keep working on the paintings after the fact. Um, 
like especially the win the winners of the, you know for the whoever the sitter is they'll often like do more work on it and then give it to them uh and have a good night everybody i hope uh you all uh uh have a great night yeah i'm sorry i'm i'm just not a morning person is the problem so it's hard for me to want to paint at like 9 a.m Everyone must be in Europe. Yeah, probably. Uh, Louis says, I can understand that, but here it is after 1 p.m. 11 p.m., sorry. Yeah, no, I'm not a normal person, uh, Luis. Um, so um, that's the problem. That's really the problem. I'm just not normal. Uh, I went to bed. I try and force myself to go to bed by 3 a.m. So I know it's me. I struggle to go to bed by 3 a.m. I'm I'm just a night person, so yeah, I I know that I'm I know I'm the problem here. Don't worry about it. I'm very lucky that at my job, um, I uh, what's it called? I work on LA time, even though I live in Texas, um, which means that instead of like starting at nine, I start at eleven. So. Very lucky that I can do that. Used to be much more of a night owl, uh, Louis says. Now I don't know what happened. I go to bed a lot earlier. Uh, some people, it just changes over time. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to be one of those people. Uh, but it does, it does change over time for people. The reason I say that is because, like, my my whole family is like this. Well, not everybody, but a lot. Even into older age, like, my my mom is like this. And so, yeah. I should say, not my whole family. My mom's side of the family. I know where, I know where this is coming from. We'll put it that way. I know who's to blame.
this is one area where there's a lot of bounced light. So I'm trying to incorporate that like purple. I always get, I always get purple and um, violet mixed up, but I think, I think purple color is the right, right one. I always get those mixed up though in name. One's more blue, one's more red, and I can never remember. I think the red one is the violet and the blue is purple. Oh my god, I think I just realized how to remember that. So one of my favorite pigments is, um, one of my favorite colors is quinacridone rose or quinacridone red or quinac or permanent ro uh, rose, just kind of depends on the name. Uh, but uh, the pigment name is PV19, which stands for pigment uh, violet. And it's more of a red color, so I think I'll remember that. That's exciting. Okay, normally, I probably wouldn't be going for the eyes this early. Because um, I've, I've changed my approach to eyes a lot over the years. But given that I'm trying to do it within a time limit and everything, I'm, I'm going to try and get the eyes in now. But yeah, I used to... Um, I used to do the eye, I've said this before, so I apologize if I'm repeating myself. Um, but I used to do the eyes first with the idea that um, if I get the eyes right, then I, you know, they're the most important thing. So I'll get those right and then, you know, continue from there kind of thing. But if I don't get the eyes right, there's no point in finishing or continuing the painting start over and get until you get them right. However, my approach has changed drastically from that. Now I usually leave the eyes till close to the end because um, I don't want to get locked in and over concerned about getting the eyes right. If I get everything else right, the eyes will just kind of, I don't want to say they'll just fall into place because there's still a lot of work, but a lot less work uh, to get them right if everything is in the right place prior. But yeah, that's um, my approach has changed on that. Uh, Zan says, I'm still here in painting. You've taken a couple of progress shots, but it's hard to stop the flow to type. No worries. No worries at all. At the end, I, I hope that everyone will, you know, people will share. Also, you're welcome to ta share on social media and tag me. I guess, uh, well, 
I haven't done a, I didn't come up with a hashtag, but like, maybe, maybe you guys can help me come up with a hashtag while we're, while we're sitting here uh, trying to figure this out. What would be a good, what would be a hashtag? Cause like portrait artist of the year paint along, uh, might be a little, might be a little long for a hashtag type of thing. I could do like all the first letters of that. Like what is it? P portrait P A uh, O fucking dyslexic man. This is painful. Uh, but you know what I mean? We could do that. Luis says, Liad Portrait Artist of the Year Paint Along. So Liad, P-A-O-T-Y-P-A-L. I like that. I like that because then it also includes my channel, which I appreciate, or me, I appreciate that. But it also lets me know that, you know, that it's like for me and not just someone else. Because I don't know, someone else may have come up with this idea before. So I appreciate that. Thank you. That's very helpful. I think we'll do that. I, the funny thing is, uh, I think people are going to have a harder time getting the spelling of my name correct than they are the portrait artist of the year part. <laughs> You wouldn't be, you wouldn't believe how much people get the spelling of my name wrong all the time. Even people who know my name it will get the spelling wrong. You have to double check all the time. I understand that. I totally get that. It's a it's an odd one. It definitely is an odd one. The thing that people often get wrong though, which I think is kind of funny, is they'll do um they'll they'll put the A in between the the H and the D. Which I'm like, I don't know how you got that, but okay. I know I've said this a million times, but like, I am the easiest person to find online with one stipulation, and that is if you can spell my name correctly. I mean, I, 
I do have my first name as a dot com, which is kind of, you know, cool and unique, but um, just goes to show like how odd of a name it is. Carlos says, I love your name, Leo. It might be silly, but I've always wanted my uh, my name to be Joshua. Um, Des says, I named my son Joshua. Oh, interesting. I, I do think people should be I think they should make it easier for people to change their name if they want to. Because, like, if you want to change your name, like, by all means, go for it, you know? Yeah, you can, exactly. You can be Joshua if you want to change your name. Go for it. I will say, I, when I was in high school one year, I tried to, uh, maybe it wasn't high school, it was in middle school. Anyways, one year at school, no matter what, uh, I tried to just tell, I moved to a new school. And so I told everyone my name was Lee instead of Liad because people struggled so hard with my name. Um, but that backfired a little on me because, uh, people would then call me and I wouldn't respond. Uh, the teacher thought I had a hearing problem and talked to my mom about it. Actually, that's a good point. You can just change your YouTube handle if you want to be called that online. Just if you do that, please let me know so I, I can, you know, remember who I'm talking to. I'm hard enough time with names.
Zan saying portrait artist severe P O T P A O T Y Liad. Um hmm. now I'm torn between the two. Both are good. I think the first one might be a little better. It's longer and it's probably not as catchy in a way, but it's clearer. Because the first na the name Liad kind of, I think it's a little clearer. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but. That could be my bias towards my own name coming into play, I don't know. Where is Don Lee for this? Des, you know, you think you have your friends, right? And then, and then they just don't show up for you sometimes. And you know who your real friends are. I'm totally kidding. I don't know where he is, uh, but you know, it's not a big deal. <laughs> uh, for the record, I'm totally joking around. I love Don Lee. He's great. Maybe Don Lee will do a version of this on his own channel. Like he'll, you know, stream and do, do it then. I don't know. Or maybe he thought he couldn't do it digitally, so he didn't think he could participate. Which is not true. If anyone wants to participate digitally, by all means. Like I said, I don't know that you'd get on the show ever, but like... Clearly, that is not our uh, concern here. Although, again, I do want to reiterate, Sky, if you're watching this, uh, please have me on your show. I will totally come on your show.
for the record, I'm just joking around. I mean, I will go on the show. I just don't think anyone's ever going to see this and invite me on, to be clear. I'm just kidding around. Laura says, I caved. I'm doing mine digitally. I posted work in progress in Discord. Okay. I will show that at the end since you're moving on to, to what's it called? Uh, just because I'm also trying to like finish right now. So if you don't mind, that is, if you're like, no, show it now. Fine. I'll show it now. But if you don't mind, uh, Carlos, Carlos says you'd be brilliant on the show. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Uh, I, I would enjoy it. I think I would enjoy it a lot. Carlos uh, says, heck, uh, change it. I'll change my name a bunch over the years. Uh, had one the longest of any, lol. Okay, uh, I think Zan's slightly behind on the, um, on the stream. <laughs> that, that happens to Don Lee all the time, or it has in the past. It's happened to me a couple times too. That's a, di one of the disadvantages on, on, uh, what's it called? YouTube, the replay is so built into it. It's a great advantage, but every once in a while someone will accidentally pause and then come back to it and not realize they're paused or or the app will just mess up and so they'll be living in the past um kind of in a way just kind of funny but also annoying i'm pretty sure that's what's happening right now Louis says Dan is in a Doctor Who episode right now. Yeah. What was what was that? The uh, everything's all timey wimey wobbly, whatever it is. I can't say it again properly, but yeah. Wibbly, wobbly, timey, whiny. Yes, exactly. Thank you. We're at the 30 minute mark, everybody.
Frickin' time just speeds along when you don't want it to, doesn't it? Like I said, I'm not going to be super strict about the, t um, you know, I'm trying to get it, but like, I'll be honest, I'll give myself a few extra minutes if I feel like I really need it because I'm pretty sure the contestants in the show don't have to, you know, manage stream as well. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's fair. But yeah, uh, I think being on the show would be a lot of fun as long as it didn't turn it into the American version. You know, like, Americanize it too much. All right, I need to get his stubble in a bit more. Um, He's still very, very mushy looking. I need to kind of... Sh Get it all kind of together. It's also worth mentioning what's when it comes to stubble i think you're better off exaggerating the stubble than trying like if you have to lean in one direction of like going overboard with it or under go over and the reason is because if you go over it'll read like a beard which is kind of what it is, right? It's double, but it's like a beard. But if you go under, it'll be confusing and you'll just be like, what is going on? Or it'll look patchy and not uh, good. So if you have to choose one, overdo it. Worst case, it looks like they have more of a beard than they actually do. In case anyone's wondering, well, why didn't you say that earlier? It's because I just thought about it. Usually I do not have a time limit on my painting as much, so it's not a concern. To be honest.
All right, let's get, I like this song, but I need something a little more um, urgency to it. All right, here we go. All right. There we go. What are we listening to? I just I just put on Slipknot for myself. This is why I don't try too hard to play music on my stream because I feel like a lot of people are not going to like my uh, musical choices. So I just kind of like, it's all right. I don't have to have music playing. Um, yeah. And don't get me wrong, I like other stuff too. I, I have a lot of rock music that I like, but, um, you know, just I feel like there's a good amount of people who would not be into a lot of... Like, one of my favorite bands is Tool. Uh, you know, I love a lot of grunge. Um, Rage Against the Machine. All kinds. I know there's a lot of people who like this stuff, but yeah. I loved uh, the music you used uh, on your shorts. Oh, thank you. Um, I don't know which one. There's a few. Um, if you're, th you might be, you're probably thinking of, um, uh, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking on the name and I don't have time to blank on the name right now. Um, Um, Sleep Token. I love Sleep Token. I've become a fan of Sleep Token, yeah. Uh, but, or Sweeney. Uh, what it, it's not Sweeney Todd, but it's something like that. Tim, I can't, no, not Tim Sweeney. That's someone else. Oh, I can't remember his name right now. Very bluesy kind of thing. Yeah. I have a I have a short. I'm so frustrated. I have a short ready to go. I and I haven't posted it yet because I could not figure out what song I wanted to use on it. Literally like the video's already done. Um I just couldn't figure out what video to um what song to put on it and so I haven't posted it yet. <laughs>
Everyone make him talk so we get more time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got quiet there. I was just fo so focused. Sorry. Um, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to like evaluate r very quickly, like what are the things that at any moment I need to do to make it look more finished. It's really interesting because this isn't, I don't think that this is like what I would consider a good way of uh, necessarily doing a portrait, right? Because I'm right now, what I'm actually doing is I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to do at this point, I'm, it's not that I'm trying to do like a good portrait or rather I'm trying to make it look like it's a good portrait. It, it's kind of a, you know, it's not, how can I describe it? it? You know, it's not like, oh, let me bring this to a finish. It's let me make it look like it's as finished as I can in the time, you know, um, which you know, it's fun. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Uh, this is a lot of fun, but I don't know that this is like how I would think of like a good way of doing portraits under, we'll say like quote unquote, normal circumstances. But you know, Ah, uh, yeah. Jeez, time just flies, though. It's crazy. Like I said, I, I do think on the show, it's a little different, although they have a lot to do. I wonder how much they cheated on the show, right? Because, like, on the show, they do have a lot of, like, you know, they have to talk to the presenters every once in a while. Um and so on. I do wonder if they give them slightly more time, uh, you know, because shows also, they have to coordinate so much with everything. Like, if you've ever been on a production, um, there's so much coordination that goes into, like, getting everything to run. I do wonder if they, you know, budge things around a little bit just for coordination and so on. Also, if like my, um, they also take breaks, Des says, uh, yeah, I think, I think they do get like some breaks sometimes for some of it. I, I remember at one point they used to take like a midway break, but I don't know if they still do. Um, yeah. You know, and because they're filming, there's a lot of like things happening all at once so they might have to like give them okay everybody we're you know we're gonna clap for this person now everybody hold on blah blah you know there's a lot of that stuff in in productions which might affect you know how they handle the timeline of things a bit
But yeah, this is all in good fun. Don't stress out about it. What I'll probably do, just FYI, is I'll probably, like, when we hit the time, roughly, you know, I'll call it, and then, um, you know, I'll call it for the stream kind of thing. But I will probably work on this some more after the fact, because as even though I'm, you know, I'm doing this for for this, I probably will end up putting in some more hours into the painting to get it to where I want it to be, you know, kind of thing. Like I said, I know a lot of the painters do that. Like they'll, uh, the ones who, you know, the, what's it called? The celebrity guest likes it. A lot of times they'll end up doing more work on it afterwards, uh, to take it to a fi to a more of a finish. I've heard, I've heard painters who've been on there talk about that. So, uh, David, uh, if you see this by any chance, um, let's talk. Totally down. I mean, it'd be nice if you covered, you know, shipping, because it's expensive to ship to England. But, you know, let's work something out. This is kind of the type of uh, way of painting hair that I normally kind of avoid, which is like painting along with it kind of thing. Although it is very convenient sometimes, uh, like now when I'm trying to get it fast, but I generally try to avoid this. Well, not try to avoid it, but rather I don't, I, I'm careful about like doing too much of it. Um, I think the way I'd phrase it. So what I'm referring to is like, here, I'll show you. Um, so that was like painting with the, the hair. This is painting in the opposite direction. Uh, not opposite, but, uh, perpend is it perpendicular? I think that's the one where I go in and I, you know, paint like this. Um, personally, I like the look it gives. And like I said, it, it stops me from. Um, what's it called? Um, from relying too much on like the type of brush and everything. And it's more about like the choices I'm making 
to get this look. And don't get me wrong, you need a, a good brush, like a, a sharp brush for this, but any brush can be sharp. That's not a like, oh, let me get my special hair brush for this, you know? Justin was watching the screen for a minute. Okay, we're a minute away from time. Like I said, I'm gonna take a few extra minutes because there's a few final touches that I really wanna put on this. And like I said, I'm gonna take the slight liberty here. Um, yeah. All right, I need more purple. I don't think that reads, so let's do that.
Okay, then. We're definitely coming up to the end. My, uh, my earbuds just warned me that I'm low battery. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're at time, but like I said, I'm taking a couple extra minutes here. And then I'll show off every, anyone who posted. And if no one posted, that's fine too. It's not a big deal. Uh, but yeah, and then we'll do, I'll mention the tag again, uh, the hashtag, but yeah. All right. So, uh, Louis says, woohoo, well done. Oh, all right. So clearly there's some things that aren't finished, but I feel like that's kind of, that's kind of, you know, par for the course on that show. Like some of this stuff down here, I'm not overly concerned with, right? Like that just happens on the show. The eyes. Let me, let me get the eyes real quick. All right. In case anyone's curious, yes, he does have brown eyes from what I can see, but he is purple man, so I'm adding some purple into his eyes. I'm going to keep my head out of the, out of frame. I'm literally just kind of like squatting in place right now to try and keep my hair out of, out of the frame. All right, I'm almost done here. Just, like I said, I really wanted to get the eyes in. I feel like that's fair.
So my general, like the thing I generally do with the eyes is I'll make one eye a bit more detailed than the other um, because we really lack the ability to focus on too many things at once. Uh, so I feel like I feel like making one of them more detail usually works better than trying to detail them both. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my, my go-to for that. All right, I think I'm just going to call it done because I'm trying to keep with the spirit of the of the show. Uh, there's so much more I want to do to it, but I think I'm going to have to keep it, you know, I'm going to have to call it for the for the purposes of the stream. And then on my own time, I'll, I'll see about fixing it uh, or finishing it rather. Let me take a photo of it. I want to make sure I have a photo to capture the progress, even though I have this stream. Yeah. All right, let's see what everybody else did. If anybody posted, did anybody else post? All right. Oh, cool. All right. All right. We have here some posts. Louis says it looks great. Oh, thank you so much. Like I said, I do think I would do some, you know, make some ch different choice. Like, you'll see the finish, but, you know, it's good. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. All right, let's, let's see. All right. So, uh, okay, uh, bravo everyone. Thank you. All right, let's, let's share discord, uh, discord. All right, cool. All right. Uh, Dez's work. This is digital, of course, uh, if it wasn't clear, but very well done. I love how, um, how you uh like i know time was an issue and you just chunked everything in there super fast and you have all the form is in there like you really got it solid um you know that her f all of her form all hold on can i can i add my camera hold on uh add okay i'm not going to add my camera that's just too complicated sorry but um but yeah, you did a great job. Uh, it shows the form and I can see very clearly areas where you're already smoothing it out and really trying to get all those subtleties in there on her face and head. Good job. Really good job. All right. This is uh, Zan. And we have progress shots. Very good lay in. I love it. I love it. Okay, I'm going backwards a little, but very nice. All right, here we go. All right, building it, building it up. That's the reference. All right. Um, wait, is this the final? No, okay. This is the final for now. Yeah, very good. Um, very, very good. It you took on a lot more doing 
doing so much more because I just focused on the face and, you know, barely on the shoulders. You are adding in so much more. And that is so much harder to do. Uh, and so much more time consuming in, in, you know, in such a limited time. So really good. Oh, wait, we have a more progress shot. Yeah, very nice. Very nice, Sam. You've done a great job. Um, you know, clearly, like, this is clearly on its way, you know, and you, the time limit is, like I said, you have to remember the people who go on the show, they get notice in advance and most of them practice a lot of it, you know, uh, for a long time trying to get their, um, their process down to the time limit. Um, if you guys haven't seen her show Chewing Gum, you should. I, I'll be honest, I've never even heard of her. I didn't know. Oh, Des, look at that. Look at that. Very well done. You did so much more work. Um, so good. So, so good. That's the, that is one of the advantages of digital, like the, the, how fast you can fill it in, not, not to take away, uh, from what you've done, cause you've done a phenomenal job. Um, I'm just comparing this to, uh, Zan's. It can be so much harder sometimes to, to fill, to get everything just filled really fast. You did such a good job. Very well done. You know, and like I said, um, you know, t the time limit, this isn't a good way of making a good portrait, but it is fun. It is a good, fun way of doing it, you know, for the, for this prop, this, uh, this thing. Oh, and let me show you, I have, let's see, uh, no, sorry. I don't remember my shortcuts. Okay. So I have a, I have a bit of a zoom in here. Um, so you guys can see a little bit of like some of the details. This is digital zoom. So I'm sorry. Um, the quality is, you know, Sam says, thanks for generous words, Liad. Uh, why is it that you can, uh, see so much more wrong after you share it? I can explain that actually. Um, I understand the joke, but there's actually a reason for that. Um, when you see your painting in a different, uh, in a different format, it, um, you're seeing it with new eyes. That's why people flip their stuff or why people will use mirrors. Um, you know, uh, they'll turn it black and white, uh, all, all, all kinds of stuff like that. That's why people do that. And it works for me too. The only problem I'm having is that I, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, I've been looking at it so in so many different places that I, after a while I start losing that, but I do think that there's some things that are off on this. If I'm looking, if I'm being honest, I do think I got some things wrong here slightly. It's not huge, but some subtleties here and there. Like I said, it's all for fun. I really got the signature side eye nice. Thank you. Yeah, I was trying to I was trying to do that. In my reference, he's looking forward, but I tried to, you know, make him like give that side eye a bit. Um, but yeah. So uh it is 537. I am gonna call it though. It was a lot of fun. This was so much fun, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all for participating. Um and the, the hashtag is going to be, let's go with Liad, hashtag Liad, uh, portrait artist of the year, paint along, you know, just the first letters of it, of it. Uh, we'll do that. Um, if you, if you, if anyone posts online and if you, uh, if you take it to a finish later and post again, please tag me again. I'd love to see it. I'd love, love, love to see it again. Uh, whatever, wherever you take it. Um, and then I stream, 
Oh, my brain. I stream Monday nights, Wednesday nights, and Sundays. So I'm here three times a week. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think I've, I think I've reached my, uh, I don't know what else I'm saying. I'm out of it now. <laughs> it is, it is exhausting, uh, but it's, it was a lot of fun. Thank you everyone, everyone for participating. We'll do this again. We'll definitely do this again at some point. Um, so yeah. And I don't rate anybody because I don't know how to do that on YouTube and it's too much to do it on Twitch and YouTube. So anyways, I'm going to call it a day. Thank you everyone so much and uh, have a great rest of your weekend. What's left of it. And a good week and see you tomorrow.